Today, I'm going to be watching my debate with Mike Enoch for a couple hours. We're going to review the debate and see what went wrong, what went right, and then if we had any facts of the matters that we were incorrect on. Now, try not to be too disappointed, guys, okay? I know that a lot of you in chat, look, hold on. I know a lot of you are out there for League, okay? Don't worry, all right? Listen. It's it's still back there, okay? But we just have to we have to keep it in Sometimes you have to keep things in the back of your heart. No, fuck. I fucked it up. Sometimes you got to keep things in the back of your mind but on top of your heart, okay? Based on that too because if you break it down, you're probably going to see interests will align more with like regional interests or class interests. Like well, how sure many of them were Jews? Well, well, you know what? I'll, I mean, we could, we could, we could, we could, we could, we could, so with the Jewish. I need to not let, fuck, I still let people divert me from a, from a point. That's a really good point. If you were to figure out like groups of people, what their interests are, it's not usually going to be white people or black people. It's usually going to be more regional based um, or class based. So, for instance, in the 50s and 60s, when Boston's manufacturing, not Boston, I think Boston, when Baltimore's manufacturing was dying, um, the people in the suburbs were oftentimes at ends with the people in the, that were still living in the city, right? Even though they could have been white. You know, different coalitions of voter blocks formed around different interests. It wasn't just skin color. Stupid as fuck. Sorry, hold on. My DGG chat, the coronavirus or whatever the fuck it was, is running around. Love you, so. buddy. Would you like to see my uh oh? Shut the fuck up. Which question is a whole other, a whole other thing. Wait, 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 hold on, wait, wait. Dead Omegalin. Okay, now I have to turn the sound on where you guys can be heard. Uh, you can be heard. Let me switch here. Oh, now you can be seen and heard. Uh, hello, Destiny. Welcome to the kill stream. Hello, Mr. Mike Enoch. Welcome to the kill stream. Both of you. How you doing? That's me. Doing very good. Now, um, the structure that I put out today, of course, you know, it's the kill stream, so we'll see <laughs> how close how closely <laughs> to the structure we actually hew. But uh, it called for two five minute opening segments. I was going to uh, let you lead off, Destiny, if that's okay with you. Um, so me and Mike came to a gentleman's agreement uh, to say, fuck the five minute intro shit. Get us out of this fucking bullshit. We don't want to do this shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't Jesus don't Christ. What is this right, fucking no. college debate forum? Jesus, come on. <laughs> okay, so. <clears throat> My goal going into this debate is to acknowledge that people on crazy extremist groups tend to have some descriptive truth of the world. Okay, I'm going to be very basic in everything that I explain. So I'm going to explain all my terms or whatever. If this is boring, then get ready to be very fucking bored. Mm. I'm going to use two different words a lot in this conversation, okay? You have prescriptive and you have descriptive. So descriptive is like a statement of fact about the world. So the car is blue, my light is bright, my girlfriend is upset. These are like descriptive statements of fact, okay? Usually you use the word is in them, I think. <laughs> is or are, verbs of being, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I made that part up. Like descriptive statements are like matters of fact about the world. Um, Prescriptive statements are usually things like, you know, ought statements. Like, we ought to do this. We should do that. Um, you know, we need to do this. These are prescriptive statements. So, like, a descriptive statement might be um, X millions of Americans are uninsured in the United States. Now, that's only a descriptive statement. A prescriptive statement might be we ought to insure the X million number of people in the United States that are uninsured. So, extremists oftentimes have correct descriptions of the world. So, for instance, they might say, like, oh, you know, um, people are sad, men feel attacked, um, white people might feel like they're under siege or whatever. These descriptive statements might be true, um, but the prescriptive statements are oftentimes like, therefore, we need white nationalism, therefore, we need white supremacy, therefore, we need to deport all the black people, therefore, we need, you know, to do <clears throat> other shit like that. Um, that's, um, yeah, so that's, so I'm going to use descriptive and prescriptive a lot. My goal for this conversation is to acknowledge some underlying reality that shit is pretty fucked right now for a lot of people, but then to try to offer an alternative explanation um, as opposed to saying that like, oh, well, it has to be um, the Jews or some shit, right? Yeah, okay. All right, so here we are. So trying to be personable and friendly and have common ground.
This is the goal, all right? Guys, <laughs> it's the fucking kill stream. What are you talking about, dude? Well, that was thrown. Now that was me. I said if you guys could talk and just agree to kill it. It was kind of. It was kind. Well, I was about to use the term, but I shouldn't use that term. It was. It was uncalled for. Superfluous. Well, I think I get what you're trying to do. You wanted to do like a structured thing here, but I, yeah. I don't know. If it's, uh, uh, you know, it's gonna be like an informal, as I said, informal Joe Rogan style debate. If um, we're just changing everything up, why don't I just start out with letting you guys question each other, and I'll just let Destiny begin that. How about that? All right, yeah, sure. Oh, shit, wait, is that, wait, hold on. Wait, now we're going, um... No, wait, I mean... Right, oh, shit, you, you wait, hold on, okay, okay, I like the five, I like the five-minute <laughs> thing, okay. So I'll, I'll lay out, like, my general, um, my, my general platform-ish thing, I guess, in, in response to, what, what is this directly in relation to? How about this? What, what exactly is this over? Because me and Mike were trying to figure yeah, that out in the intro. Yeah, that's actually a very good question. <laughs> Why don't you tell us, Ralph? Why what do you want us to talk? So initially for this, Ralph has like given us both like questions that we've got for the other person. One, he asked me about like what does it mean to be a socialist, and then for me, mine was like what does it mean to be an American. But then it seemed like Ralph wanted to kind of do it a different way or something. So me and Mike are kind of trying to figure that out. Um, if that's what like this thing is over right now. Talk about why are we here? Well, I had I had the issues that you guys said that you wanted to address uh, here on uh, on Twitter that I laid out. Let me see here. Uh, you mentioned, uh, Destiny, you mentioned what it means to be an American, uh -huh. uh, what it means to be white, what kind of culture we're trying to protect. Uh, that's kind of the things that, or those, those type of areas is kind of what I thought you wanted to talk about. And then Mike mentioned uh, Destiny uh, and his uh, border position. Uh, do you consider yourself a socialist? Uh, thoughts on capitalism? What sort of culture are you defending? That's what you guys told me. Now I have my own questions as well. If you if you just want me to go to those, I'm I'm just not too familiar with uh, Destiny's general politics. I mean, I've heard things, but generally not from sources uh, friendly in any way to to, to Destiny. So um, I, I would take it with a grain of salt. But I would you know an understanding of, of your your basic politics, and I guess I mean you don't have to obviously. Oh, yeah. here's what I believe. That yeah, that's fine. Actually, I can out. do that. I can I can give like a, a, a short spiel on that. So right. <clears throat> economically, um, I'm characterized as either a sock them or a neoliberal, depending on how you ask. Um, I'm a big proponent of capitalism, but obviously there are big problems that capitalism doesn't overlook. Um, for instance, uneven distribution. That capitalism jobs. doesn't overlook, that are overlooked by capitalism was the correct way to state that, but okay. Jobs and wages across the country. There's a whole bunch of bad shit going on right now with that, like in manufacturing and whatnot. Um, and then taking care of people in terms of like healthcare and whatnot. Uh, capitalism doesn't deal with that either. But generally, I would describe myself as like a capitalist. And then we can go into that more if we want to talk about economic policy. Um, socially, I would be described as a progressive. I'm very pro-degenerate, homosexuality, LGBT, <laughs> all of those horrible um, diversity, all of that stuff. Um, I'm huge on that stuff as well. Um, so that's where I'm at socially. In terms of what I imagine this conversation will kind of revolve around is a lot of the uh, broader problems that we're experiencing today as a people related to like, um, I don't know if you'd call it like fragmentalization or whatever, uh, but the idea that we've all Fragment kind of like fra fragmentization, fragmentization, there's a word I'm looking for. Fra oh, fragmentation. Yeah, related to fragmentation was the word I was looking for there fragmented off into these little unique people in society that don't have a sense of community or don't have a sense of belonging or a sense of purpose anymore. And I hope to talk about that with, um, with, uh, with Mike. And hopefully I can make a case that doesn't have to revolve around like being white, I guess, um, which seems to be the case with some other people. All right, yeah, that's that. Yeah, so under so the underlying reality of people feeling alone and left behind and fucked or whatever. So that's what I think that most white nationalists kind of point at, and then that's kind of what I'm aiming for as well, yeah. That sounds fine to me. Uh, I'm I'm totally okay with that mm -hmm. as a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Now, why don't you lay out your th your general positions, Mike? Since Destiny just did the same. Yeah, right? I mean, my my general positions are that um, I guess I could be described. The best thing would be third positionist in that I would I am socially conservative. Um, I, I wouldn't call myself conservative. When they say third positionalist, I didn't ask him because I don't want to sound dumb. If it's, is that supposed to also kind of be like a wink, wink, nod, nod to like the Third Reich? Is that like a... In any other way, I think the conservative movement is an absolute disgrace that has totally betrayed its constituents and, and like really sold them up the river. Uh, but I think in terms of social values, that, that's where I would stand very much 
anti-degenerate than believing that people that wish to not live those sorts of lifestyles or not even interact with people that do have every right to to do that and, and actually to create strong barriers between themselves and people that want to do those sorts of things uh i would be uh, economically i would also say i was a progressive um i would i believe very much in strong uh government involvement in the economy i think the government should take a hand in healthcare. i think it should take a hand in managing the economy i think it should we should have a uh government um you know government investment in uh various industries protection of industries i mean it's not exactly i couldn't give you you know word for word every policy but i would say protection uh of immigration uh, in order to protect wages protection of industry with tariffs uh, protection of national infrastructure or building i wanted to have like a broader I kind of wanted to have a broader conversation about ideology here. Um, so there are a lot of points in this debate where I kind of like... Mighty knock, more like tiny cock. Where I kind of feel weakness. Um, and ordinarily, I would jump on it. I would attack. Um, so like when somebody says to me at the beginning of a conversation, when somebody says to me like, I don't really have like particular policy positions, but I like that that's weakness and that's like very ripe for like okay wait well what do you want to do well what do you mean well what's gonna happen to you do that right he'll have no answer to these questions so like there are multiple places in this debate where i can feel like a lot of weakness where i know that i could go hard but i don't because i want to keep it as like a broader more or broader conversation more focused on ideology um rather than like the nitty-gritty or the policy positions that i would expect somebody to have of national infrastructure those sorts of things i would be for so uh, basically, third position is on the cultural on um, in terms of the issue of fragmenting society, I would just say that, like, objectively speaking, homogeneous societies are happier and people that wish to live as such. OK, I <clears throat> I fucked this up a lot. Is homogeneous a word or is it homogenous or are these two different words? <clears throat> Wait, over your temperature, 1000 degrees. Oh, wait, I don't have to build this out of fucking steel. I can just make this out of fucking iron. Or lead, even. It all means the same. Okay. Because I thought I said, I used to say homogeneous a lot. And then I either learned in chemistry, or maybe it was later in life. Someone was like, homogeneous. It's heterogeneous and homogeneous. But it's not heterogeneous. It's not heterogeneous and homogeneous. It's heterogeneous or homogeneous. But, uh, but okay, I, this is super minor. I was just curious. <laughs> There's a lot of words that Which I that I read a lot, that I don't hear a lot, and then I end up pronouncing them horribly. So, when the worst person you know makes a good point. Sort of a default uh, desire of people, as expressed when, when, for example, government doesn't purposefully try to forcefully integrate people. People naturally choose not to do it. So that's where people's desires are. That's obviously perfectly. So. <clears throat> I don't want it to feel too like much like I'm talking at the audience rather than engaging with the person. But what Mike is saying here is I don't like when the government tries to force people to integrate. He's doing two particular things here. Um, he's trying to say that um, Jews are the head of society that are controlling the government and they're forcing on you forced integration via things like the Hart Seller 1965 Immigration Act. Right. The, these are the things that he's mentioning here without stating them directly, basically okay and healthy and there's nothing wrong with it so i would say that uh given the the basic desires of populations to uh, associate with among themselves people should have a right to do that and they should be, be able to build this is another thing where we got lost in the weeds a little bit later on when we started to bring up polling data but this is like another thing that i just don't really see this substantiated anywhere um this uh, this strong desire for populations in the United States to stay homogenous is just not something that I typically see. Um, oh no, where did I have all my? Oh wait, I know where I have it actually. I think it's it's in here somewhere. Hold on, I don't know if I put personal information with his because <laughs> I I read through a, a couple, like um there's a big profile on him. Um, do I have polling data in here? Wait, I know I do. I linked it to him. Oh, yeah, it's this it's this peer research poll right here. Nice, good good copy paste. Like I tried to find this information where like Americans are like saying they want all white people. Um and I don't I just can't really find that data much. 
According to the U.S. Census Bureau, in the next 25 to 30 years, African Americans, Latinos, and people of Asian descent will make up a great a majority of the population. The percentage who say, in general, this is X for the country. Um, most people say it's neither good nor bad. So people seem pretty, um, not ambivalent, uh, indifferent to it or apathetic towards it. They don't really care much. Even people with a Republican lean, um, only 21% said bad, which was surprising to me. People with a white lean, only 16% said it was bad. Or not white lean, people that are white. <laughs> um yeah, so even, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, Take a look at this. Even a preference for your neighbors being 30 to 40% of the same tribe, so not desirous of ethnic majority, leads to sorting that creates self-segregation, which could cause people to see a desire for homogeneity. Institutions and really even states around that. So, yeah. Destiny, do white America. I think the counter-argument for that would be that people are pressured to not be racist, so even if they wanted to not become a minority, they wouldn't admit it. Um, I, I need... I'll push hard. If somebody wants to engage in that level of conspiracy that people are lying on their poll responses. Um, well, so like here's two things. Mike later on will cite the Jewish people. Or I've seen him do this in his other debates. Mike cites the Jewish people when polled are very, very progressive. So that's evidence that Jews are pushing a progressive conspiracy against populations. My question would be, well, hold on. If Jews were so smart that all of them kind of had this idea of destroying white populations, why wouldn't they lie in polls? Like you're going to tell me that some people are so pressured into being racist or not racist that they'll lie in a poll, but the Jewish people aren't smart enough to not lie in polls? When it, like I, I, That whole like, oh, people are just lying at the polls. I don't, I don't think I buy that. Like, yeah. Americans have a right to advocate uh, without being demonized for a a majority white state. Um, so I don't, I take issue with the framing of this because that's not really what we're talking about. The the right to advocate for a pure white state. So I clarify here because a lot of white nationalists weasel around where it, instead of here's what you want to do. You want to deport all non-white people and make it illegal for them to be here. Oftentimes. Or what they'll say is they want to cap the amount of non-white people coming in, maybe not deport anybody, make it harder for them to have kids. They want to do something to maintain a white majority. But oftentimes how they'll phrase it is like, oh, I just want a place for white people. But that's all they'll say. It's like, well, hold on. What do you mean when you say that? Like, you already have a place for white people. Like, if, like your house is a place for white people. I'm sure you've got groups of friends here and that it's a place for white people. Like, do you really need, like, yeah really talking mm -hmm. about is like generally it seems to be like the expulsion of all non-white people which we don't even know what that means yet but we'll get to that later i'm sure the expulsion of all non-white people from a currently existing state um and it seems like one we haven't even made the case for that democratically yet like we can't illustrate that the majority of even white americans um, have that opinion and then two it would require like an unraveling of quite a bit of what we understand right now to be like American, I don't know if you'd say law or constitutional values or um, like like American kind of like established uh, rulings. So what's when, the name for like a legal precedent? Is it, It's not jurisprudence, right? What is, um, what's, what's the, there's like a fucking, there's a cute little, there's like a cute little fucking Latin phrase for this. Like it's already been proven in law. So we would like, is it just precedent? There's not like a, there's, I know there's a fancier word. Stare decisis. Oh, stare decisis. The legal principle of determining points in litigation according to precedent. And somebody says like, do we, do, do white people have a right to advocate for like an all white state? Um, I mean, if you want to live near white people, I think that's okay. Or not wanna... necessarily. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me reframe it. Not necessarily yeah. an all-white state or an ethno state. Do they have a right to advocate for their own racial interests um, as other races do? I guess maybe would be a way to refine uh, refine that down to a little yeah, more. Yeah, I think everybody has a right to advocate for their interests, of course. Now, it depends on what type of advocation you want to talk about. But, I mean, broadly speaking, anybody should be able to advocate for their own interests, of course. Okay. Can, can I jump in on that question, Ross? Sure, yes. Well, I, I just want to say, like, mm -hmm. I, you know, I know that the idea of an ethno state has been tossed around, white ethno states and things like that. And, and I know you've debated people on that, but I think that this is not really relevant to these are these debates always sort of rent, end up in the realm mm -hmm. of, of fantasy. Mm -hmm. there, they, this is not a, a thing that is realistic given the, where we are today, but I would say there are certain things that can be achieved and, and are realistic for white people, one that we could advocate to stop being demonized in the press and in the media. We could advocate for controls on immigration to retain 
a racial majority in this country. Uh, historically, we've had a racial majority in this country. And if the majority of people wanted to preserve that, there's nothing wrong with that. It seems that uh, by taking away the rights uh, or, or, or not, not necessarily the, the right, because white people in theory in America have the right now in Europe, it's questionable whether they do have the right to say, I want uh, white English people, really the, the native English stock to be the dominant people in Britain. I'm not sure what the laws are there, but I would guess that they probably would get in trouble for that. In America, you can say it, but you will be deprived a job. You will be deprived sometimes a bank account. You'll be deprived things uh, like a YouTube account, Patreon accounts. And any like a lot of times you will be deprived access to the economy uh, at varying levels, depending on your own you know, stick to and ingenuity. And I would say that it, there's nothing wrong inherently with that. It's historically been the position of people in America t to, to desire a, a white majority. I mean, it's been written into law. And hey. when it was take it, when the laws were changed, this was not the popular will. It was, it was a thwarting of the popular will even today by sort of a Hail Mary pass. White people. So we actually went over this with Fuentes a lot, where Fuentes tried to make the same claim that, well, actually, like, Hart Seller was passed against the will of the American people, that actually, like, none of this stuff um, w was stuff that the American people wanted. I, th there's just no evidence for that anywhere. Um, the research that I did in the Fuentes debate, one, I tried to look up polling at the time that Americans were massively opposed to this increase in immigration from the first world. Couldn't find it. And then two, um, I tried to find if any of the senators that had voted on Hart Seller, if they were punished by like constituencies that were anti-immigration. or I couldn't find that either. Most of them won the re-elections or whatever. There, there was nothing abnormal there. Um, there was no public outcry or lash out or response. So what Fuentes did was he backed into this corner of, well, the people were against it but they didn't know they were against it because they didn't know what they were voting on because they didn't understand the impact. And then it gets like, it's highly conspiratorial. Like it gets to a point where like, okay, we can't prove any of this. Like, I, like, I don't have any data. Like, it's just, you, you feel like people felt that way, but we can't really look at anything to prove that. Can we, other than, you know, when the constitution was drafted, we had slaves, <laughs> like, which is a very, very long time ago, you know? Um, yeah. People got Donald Trump elected with the understanding that he would actually start to shift things back in their favor demographically by, say, supporting illegal immigrants, which would also have the effect of, uh, you know, in helping wages, increasing wages, increasing employment among uh, na uh, natively born Americans. So I would say I'm not advocating for, like, let's kick literally all brown people off North America because that's just one. I agree with you that that would result in, you know, a level of it would not be pretty on a, on a level that would even be terrible for white people. But I think that we can. There are obviously things that we can change about this system that would uh, protect and retain a white majority. And there's no reason that we can't have that because other groups have their majorities everywhere else. And if we say, hey, look, uh, we like a particular kind of lifestyle, a particular kind of culture that does depend on being a majority in this country. Why then can't we just simply say we'd like to stay a majority? We'd like to stay the focus, uh, the folks of this country to remain being effectively the interests of our people. And I, I don't really want to oppress black people or be violent towards people of other races. But I think that we're getting to a point where whites are going to be on the receiving end some real bad stuff. And I don't want to see that happen. And there's no, to me, there's no moral reason why that has to happen. Like we should be allowed to advocate for ourselves. We should be allowed to retain the majority. We should be allowed to retain dominant place in the culture and economy of this country while others can have their uh, dominant place in the culture and economy of their countries. I don't want to invade the Middle East. I don't want to invade Mexico uh, or any of that stuff. So that's my position on that. All right, go ahead, Desmond. So there I don't want to get lost in the weeds of all the historical arguments. We can go there if we want. Um, I hash this out with Nick Fuentes a lot. Um, I reject a lot of the characterization that America was meant to be a white country because uh, whether we like it or not, or we can go to these arguments if we want, like the idea of like what white is or what black is or what Hispanic is, like these have been pretty valuable over time. Different groups have been assimilated in, in, assimilated into whiteness. Um, other groups have, have been rejected from whiteness. Like other countries have decided like how they want to determine who's white or who's not white. Um, but I don't think that like the, the broad appeal to like we used to do things this way, so we ought to go back to them. I don't even think that that's like deductively valid. For instance, I could respond to all of that and say, well, over the past twenty years we've decided this thing, therefore we ought to do it now. And it would kind of like. It would, it would destroy that entire argument, but, but it's not a good argument. It's responding to one bad argument with another bad argument. So, so ignoring like historically what we may have done in the past, what we may not have done, or how that played out. Um, I think that there are a couple of important things to realize today that the argument is kind of getting at. And one of these things um, we can talk about more if we need to, this idea that like white people are oppressed, um, I, I, I take issue with that characterization. I, I don't think that there is this widespread oppression of white people. Um, you know, do some people say like mayo side on Twitter sometimes? Um, sure. Uh, do some people say mean things about white people in social media circles or in in Hollywood? Yeah, sure. But like, if you look at like white people as a group of people in the United States, generally white people are doing okay. Now, if we break it down into specific communities, I'm from the Midwest. Obviously, there are other communities of people that have a lot of problems. In the Midwest, a lot of white people have problems with meth. In the Northeast, a lot of white people have problems with like manufacturing jobs. Um, if you want to break it out into other groups of people, not just white people, but other like kind of um, like regional groups of people, we can find different problems. Sure. It just if okay. I think I could have. This is a really strong point. I think I could have tied it back into my own statement more. The idea that like there are groups of people that have problems. They're not necessarily white though. 
though, like these problems will fall on other lines. They might fall on geographic lines. Like I said, the Midwest, they might fall on class lines, like maybe poor people, but they don't fall on racial lines. Um, I should have, I should have, I'm tying this back into my earlier point, but I didn't verbally reiterate that. I don't know if that sticks or not, if I don't like verbally like reiterate that. It feels like a lot of the times when we hearken to this like whiteness thing, we're, we're looking to like fix some of the problems that we've ran into in this new age. Problems that like I absolutely agree exist. Um, you know, like the loss of religion has probably been detrimental to the United States because we lost a lot of our communities, a lot of our culture. Um, the loss of like regional politics where people felt like regionally their political voice mattered, that kind of went away. And now it's all like federal and that matters, you know. Um, but I don't think we're going to find these things again magically by making this, you know, appeal to whiteness. You know, Japan is a homogenous country and they have tons of problems related to their culture, you know. Um, America in its founding had tons of problems throughout its history, um, even in parts of the homogenous, what we would say today are homogenous societies. They wouldn't agree back then. Um, so yeah, I just, I reject this idea that white people are wholesale oppressed and I reject this idea that we can fix a lot of the kind of like new age problems that we have with society by just wishing that more white people were there like, I, my I, argument here actually is not deductively sound if I say we used to be homogenous we still had problems back then you could argue well sure we might have been homogenous and had those problems back then but if we would have been um, if we would have been um, like diversified back then um, we would have um, we, we could have had uh, even worse problems right sorry so technically that's not deductively valid. So for instance, if I eat like an apple and I still get sick and somebody else eats a candy bar and they, um, you know, and they get sick, I can't say, well, look, they both ate the same food. They both got sick. Like the apple and the candy bar are the same goodness for each other. They're both as good as each other, right? Both healthy. Um, that's not really deductively valid. Um, I should have been more specific here and I should have said we've still had culture problems. We've still had problems of isolation. Like even in countries like Sweden or Scandinavia where, you know, people can still have these feelings of depression and blah, blah, blah. And just being in a homogenous society doesn't fix it. I should have been more specific here in, in pointing that um, criticism. I, I don't think that either of those two things are true. That's what I would say. All right. Well, I would, I would answer that by saying that one, uh, I think it's a, there's a certain embedded premise there that you, you have to be oppressed to advocate for yourself, um, which I would just generally call into question. But I also say that, you know, the question of are white people oppressed or are white people under attack? I don't know if I I don't know if I ever properly challenged that point that he just brought up enough. You do have to be oppressed to advocate for yourself. That's the point of advocacy. Like it's baked into the definition. You don't advocate for things that don't require advocation. You're typically advocating for something because it's disadvantaged. Why would you advocate for something that has a majority stake or, or a majority power position? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't need advocacy. Um, advocacy almost by definition is going to be for things that are like, um, are, are, are like, are, are usually like under attack typically. These are the things that require like advocacy. Um, Unless he wants to just say, like, talking about, like, being proud of something, I guess, which I feel like is a little bit different, but... I would say <clears throat> is uh, up to white people to answer that question. Like, what, do they feel that way? And as I know we discussed uh, some survey data that you said you may accept or may not, but it's out there whether you do or not. And uh, so I have a couple of things to bolster that point, which is that there's a NPR, Robert Wood Johnson and Harvard University study uh, from 2017 that came out that said 55% of American of white Americans feel they have been discriminated against. And of those 55%, like, some 90-odd percent of them have said that they... Uh, they have personally experienced it. On top of that, there was another survey that came out, Reuters Ipsos survey that came out actually right in the wake of the protests in Charlottesville uh, that asked various opinions on this where 39% of Americans said they felt that white people were under attack. So, Do you have the link to this, Eric? Hold on. I actually, we should look at this exact polling data. Um, I wasn't familiar with that, and I was trying, reading stuff on the fly is very, very, very difficult to like read stuff and process what they're saying and to do all of that is, is so hard to do on the fly. Um, somebody linked me this, this actual exact poll so that I could read through it. <clears throat> Poll finds the majority of white Americans say discrimination against whites exists in America today. For immediate release, on November 7, 2017, Boston, Massachusetts. This report is part of a series titled Discrimination in America. The series is based on a survey conducted for National Public Radio, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. While many surveys have explored Americans' beliefs about discrimination, the survey asks people about their own personal experiences with discrimination. Key issues or of concerns for whites facing discrimination, jobs, and college. People were asked, generally speaking, do you believe that there is or is not discrimination against white people in America today? Overall, 55% of white Americans believe there is discrimination against white people today, while 43% of whites do not believe that such discrimination exists. However, when asked if they have ever been personally discriminated against because they are white, many fewer said yes. Chart 1 shows that 19% of white Americans say they have been personally discriminated against because they are white when applying for jobs, and 13% say they have been discriminated against when it comes to being paid equally or considered for promotions. So right off the bat, about 55% of Americans are willing to say that discrimination exists against white, white people, which may or may not be true, but that doesn't mean that the same level exists against white people as black people, okay, or that... Well, yeah, I'll, I'll leave that statement there. Um, but then when asked if you've ever even personally experienced said discrimination, only 13% were even able to say yes to that. Like, um, 
Among whites who had ever applied to or attended college, 11% say they've been personally discriminated against because they are white when applying or attending. One in 10 say they've been discriminated against when interacting with the police. What's striking about these findings is the significant gap between many white Americans' general belief that white people are discriminated against in America and the relatively limited reporting of being personally discriminated against in their own lives, says Robert Blunden, co-director of the survey, and the Richard L. Menschel Professor of Health Policy and Political Analysis at Harvard University. Whites who believe discrimination against whites exists in America today more frequently report personal experiences of discrimination. Makes sense. As shown in charts two and three, whites who believe discrimination against white people exists today are significantly and consistently more likely to report that they themselves have been personally discriminated against compared to whites who do not believe discrimination against white people exists today. Importantly, these data cannot say whether the general belief that being anti that anti white discrimination exists causes a higher likelihood of perceiving personal experience discriminatory or personal experience. Oh, so this is saying it's, it, it could, like, just because you think discrimination exists, maybe you're more likely to interpret it that way. Or maybe you weren't, but because you were discriminated against, maybe now you're like, it, it could be one or the other. It's hard to say w which one is caused or whatever, but. Um, but yeah, anyway, so this was the, this is the polling data that he was kind of like referencing here. Um, said that they, uh, they have personally experienced it. On top of that, there was another survey that came out, Reuters episode survey. So I have a couple things to bolster that point, which is that there's a NPR, Robert Wood Johnson and Harvard university study, uh, from 2017 that came out that said 55% of American, of white Americans feel they have been discriminated against. And of so he's actually... So he's actually misquoting the poll here. And it would have been really good to know. I can't know every fucking poll, and I hate that. Um, hey, you're an okay dude. He's just lying about the poll right now. I'll be very charitable. No, I won't be charitable because I'm not talking to him now. But he's lying about the poll. 55% did not say that they had been personally discriminated against. 13% said that. 55% believe that white discrimination exists. And actually, knowing that difference bolsters my argument because my retort would be, well, actually, even though 55% of white Americans believe discrimination exists, only 13% have experienced it, Mike. People like you are contributing to a culture where white people feel like they're discriminated against even if it's not happening. And I think that your own polling data argues against you there. Knowing this poll, but I can't know every fucking poll. I hate that. When I do know the exact data that they're referencing, it's usually a slam dunk fucking argument. So like when I, in like our later debates with the left, or debating Fuentes after I did my research or not, like when people bring up stuff oh when I had that James also debate about contraception when he started referencing like the exact like fucking daily or Breitbart article that I'd already read because I knew where he was going to pull his information from um, it's a really huge shutdown it sucks when people bring up information that I don't know right off the top of, the top of my head because I just don't know every single fucking poll and everything um, it sucks but he's just completely and totally quoting this incorrectly here which is unfortunate those 55% like so 90 odd percent of them have said that they uh, they have personally experienced it. On top of that, so of the fifty five percent, ninety odd percent of them experienced discrimination personally. He's horribly misquoting this. Fuck. It's more like fifty five percent of whites believe discrimination exists today. Um, and then I'm just trying to make sure it's not thirteen percent of fifty five percent. It's thirteen percent of one hundred percent. And then only thirteen percent say they've been personally discriminated against. Yeah. Or wait, I'm sorry, nineteen percent in applying for jobs. So. But yeah, fuck. So he's just like completely, he's probably adding up all three percentages together or all four of these together, do you think? 21, 34, 44, 53%. Is he just adding it? I don't know. No, he's just, he, I think, I don't, I don't, I don't, he's just, hurt, he's just butchering the fuck out of that. <laughs> there was another survey that came out, Reuters episode survey that came out actually right in the wake of the protest in Charlottesville. Uh, that asked various opinions on this where 39% of Americans said they felt that white people were under attack. So it's, Reuters, Ipso, poll, white people under attack, Charlottesville. Can we find this article? Am I going to be able to find, or do you, a new Reuters, Ipsos poll, relatively, that while there's relatively little national endorsement of neo-Nazis and white supremacists, there are troubling levels of support for certain racially charged ideas and attitudes frequently expressed by Can I, is there a link to the actual, like, poll or... So, among the questions, respondents were asked if they agreed or disagreed with statements asking whether white people and racial minorities in the United States are under attack. Notably, 14% of respondents both agreed that white people are under attack and disagreed with the statement that non-whites are under attack. So, 14% of people said whites are under attack and non-whites are not under attack. So, even this isn't matching. I don't know where he's pulling his 30. Nearly one-third of respondents strongly or somewhat agree that the country needs to protect and preserve its white European heritage. And then 34% strongly or somewhat disagreed with the statement, and then 29% or whatever. So maybe this is what he was trying to do. 31% thought they were under attack. So this is so he's not so he's not quoting this correctly either. He says 
his opinions on this were 39% of Americans said they felt that white people were under attack. So no, it's not 39%, or at least all I can see here is 14%. Well, this is 14% agree that white people are under attack and disagreed with the statement that no one's under attack. Maybe more agreed that everybody's under attack. Although I don't really know if that bolsters Mike's claim or not. We would have to dive into that more, but oh, the methodology, the full results are available here. Oh, okay, okay, never mind. Here we go. So this is where his 39% comes from. White people are currently under attack in this country. Okay, this makes sense here. We find this here. So this this cl this claim was correct, according to this poll. I wonder how they disaggregate the data to figure out. Well, oh, because they have all the polls. There's a lot of... I'm very curious, though, like, when the, you go through a lot of the polls that these guys cite, and you start reading other questions, some of the answers here I feel like they wouldn't like. So, for instance, 82% of Americans either strongly agree or somewhat agree that all races are equal. 82%. That's a pretty high percentage of Americans. Only 7% disagree strongly or somewhat disagree that the races are equal. I feel like he would never cite that stat from this poll, though. I'm really curious about this white people are currently in attack. I wonder how much Trump's rhetoric has fostered his field in, into this for Americans feeling this as well. I'm really curious. Americans must protect and preserve its white European heritage. Agree and strongly, strongly agree and somewhat agree are at 31%. America must protect and preserve its multicultural heritage is at 77%. Like, I don't, I don't feel like if we were to look at like every aspect of what this poll is asking, I feel like, <laughs> I don't feel like this like paints the picture of like white nationalist leanings that, that he would want them to, but okay. It's not so much whether it's not like it's up to you, you know what I mean, to say that or not. It's like there is a substantial and growing amount of white people that feel like they have these problems. And on top of that, I'd say, as you said, there's regional problems. Certainly the things that affect people in one part of the white people in one part of the country might not affect them in, in another part. But there's no reason why uh, as a group we can't advocate for each other. And certainly, you know. Yeah. So like he's trying to draw this narrative. The, the, he doesn't really have the empirical facts on his side. I do like that he's coming to the middle to meet with me saying like, oh yeah, there are some regional problems too. A lot of people that I read through some of the 4chan comments, and I also got some personal messages, which is really rare after debates like these, um, uh, where it, on 4chan I was seeing a lot of like, Mike agreed with him too much, like he was such a cuck. Like why did Mike like agree with Destiny so much? Like he, he should have been way stronger, he cucked out hard. Those are, I typically view those as being very positive comments. Um, and I actually got a few personal messages I don't usually get with like conservatives saying like, hey, like I really liked your um, appearance on that uh, conversation. You know, like most lefties just try to hand wave all of our problems and it usually like makes us not listen to me. I, I don't normally get like personal messages. Usually they come in the form of like comments online, but um, yeah. What's the overarching claim these stats are supposed to bolster? Well, Mike is trying to make the argument that there's this growing movement of people in the United States that want it to be a white majority country. And it's, I'm sure there's a percentage, but it's not anywhere near as large as he's trying to make it out to be. You know, I don't expect, I actually don't expect, and based on my uh, survey of the political landscape, I, I would be extremely surprised if any other group was to do it. Uh, I, was, I was very shocked when Andrew Yang came out and briefly said, we have to do something to help white people. And that's what created this whole Yang Gang phenomena where all these white nationalists were uh, suddenly behind Andrew Yang. And then, of course, he, I don't know, somebody gave him a talking to and he, he dropped that. And the, the main issue here is, are white people oppressed? Well, the question is, can you advocate for them without essentially being um, kicked out of a polite society, without being removed from the economy, losing your job? Um, and, and this is not something that's applied to any other group. So it's sort of like, I don't feel like I have to show, like, oh, I've been enslaved, I've been beaten and whipped, uh, or whatever. Like, It's I kind of like if you're in a group with friends or whatever. Um, I'm trying to think of, like, what this would be. I like, am Jewish. Am I white to Mike? If I were to go back to my, like, carpet cleaning friends, who I probably know don't work there, and we were all, like, having a conversation. One guy was like, fuck, like, um, gas has been, like, slowly going back up. It's really hard for me to afford the back and forth to work, and, like, I need a new car. Like, my car is just, I'm having to put, like, 500 bucks into it every couple months because some shit is breaking, and it's fucking me over. And then another guy is like, we just had our second kid. Um, you know, I got cut back my hours at work. Um, I'm trying to find a second job, but it's really hard to balance that in childcare. Um, and fuck, you know, like, it's, it's fucked. And then I complain that, like, um, I sold my fucking Amazon stock too early, and now I have to pay ordinary income on it instead of capital gains. Like, fuck me, guys, right? Like, man, I wish that, like, we would pay attention to my problems. Like, w typically, somebody that has, like, a massive position of, like, power over, like, other groups of people doesn't usually require, like, an advocacy for that person. It just doesn't make sense. Like, in the wake of all the race problems in the U.S., like white people pretty much sit on, on on top of all of that. Like in terms of like being white isn't usually disadvantaged in the U.S. Now there are other issues 
that impact groups of white people that are worth talking about. So for instance, drug abuse, suicide, um, and then like regional or class problems, right? Being poor sucks, living in certain regions sucks. Um, but in terms of saying like, do you need to be oppressed to advocate for yourself? Like, well, kind of, yeah. If you're advocating for a group of people, the idea is that that group of people is underrepresented, hence they need the advocation, right? So yeah, that's, I'm sorry, that's like a broader point that I'm trying to, yeah. It's just in our interest as a group to um, to advocate for ourselves and advocate for maintaining a majority and political and cultural control of this country. And we see as this, you know, white people were never consulted on the immigration. And even though you're saying, okay, it is what it is now, I'm not. Even I really don't want to get lost into debating Hart Seller. Although I feel like at this point, between the the info that Eric gave me and between like the debate I did with Fuentes, I feel like I know enough about it that it's a pretty slam dunk thing. I was trying really hard this debate not to get lost into slamming him on facts because I didn't know if he'd start to just run back into the white into the JQ shit and then it would just turn into a shit show. I really wanted to like focus on ideology, um, but like this claim over and over again that Hart Seller was some big thing like tricking Americans is pretty stupid. Like it comes up over and over again and it's just not true. Even necessarily, I don't have to refer to we used to do it this way. It's like right now we can see that there's a desire for this. Like if white flight is a thing, then that, that's, a, that's a manifest desire of white people to live amongst their own. Why is this consistently thwarted by our government? There, our literal government, there is an entire department, the Housing and Urban Development Department, that is dedicated to thwarting white people's ability to live among other whites. And you even said yourself, you don't have a problem with that. So why does this exist? Well, and if that exists, then there's obviously some force out there that is directly opposed to white self-determination. And I, I, as a white person, am going to fight against that. It's just in my interest. Sure. So, I mean, we can talk about, like, whether or not white people feel like they've been discriminated against. Um, so, like, in, in terms of those Harvard polling things, when people are asked if they're discriminated against because they're white, um, those numbers fall qu quite a bit. Um, like, I'm familiar with the Harvard polling data. Like, I, like um, well, percentages of white saying... says because they're white. Like, sure, but, like, you... percentages of white saying they've ever been personally discriminated against in each situation because they're white. When it comes to jobs, that's 19%. That's the highest one. When it comes to being paid or promoted equally, 13%. Applying to attending college, 11%. In oh, Eric linked me this. Sorry, I was trying to read it as I I was like doing it so okay so i do call him out but it's a lot later after he cited it would have been nice to call him out on the spot but i was trying to read the point data as he was giving his argument it's really really hard for me to listen to a person talk take notes on what they're saying so i can respond to the argument formulate my response to them before i get to talk and then also read data um, at the same time incorporate uh, look for a mismatch between something they said and what i'm reading and then take that and then incorporate it into a response doing all of the same time is so fucking hard it seems really easy like oh open a poll read it listen to them write down what they're saying respond but, but it's so much it's so difficult to do this on the spot fuck me it's really hard with at least 10%, like these numbers drop quite a bit. It's not like 80% of whites are out there saying they've been discriminated against. And it's funny because I'm personally familiar with the idea when that Harvard case went through, when people complained about the affirmative action thing, there was a lot of research that was done over when the Chinese kids filed that lawsuit against Harvard. There's a lot of research that was done over. Oh, fuck. I actually, um, I wish I would have memorized this better. Well, here, let's finish my, um, you know, whether or not uh, certain groups of people, Chinese people were being discriminated against um, due to affirmative action policies. And what they found out was that there was a huge number of white people that had made it into those colleges just because they had family members that worked there, because they were on some athletic scholarship, or because they had um, alumni, people that had donated to the college. So like, if you want to talk about like people being discriminated against, you know, I, I just don't think that like white people- I would people... be interested to break that white, that white people category down a little bit more and see if there was something to be revealed amongst uh, the people that they were classifying as white. Yeah, but, I'm uh, super yeah. curious on that too, because if you break it down, you're probably- I miss this here because I forget sometimes white nationalists don't consider jewish people to be white so he was dog whistling saying that they were all jews see interests will align more with like uh, regional interests or class interests like uh -huh. but, but i was thinking from a data point of view he wanted to break it down like oh well was it just rich white people making it in or was it poor white people it's like oh yeah that would be i'd be interested in that but he just meant jewish people and we're jews yeah well, well you know what? I, I mean we could we could we could we could we, so the jewish question is um, study on Harvard finds 43% of white students are legacy athletes related to donors or staff. The number drops dramatically for black, Latino, and Asian American students, so less than 16% each coming from those categories, the study said. Um, I haven't looked at the study itself. I just read this article on it. I don't know if they break out Jews as a separate category um, for this. I, but, like, I mean, both of our claims, like, I don't even know how I would begin to, like, I would have to get, like, the, um, the actual data that they collected for their study. Purchase this paper for $5. That's a good-ass meme, dude. Harvard once capped the number of Jews. Is it doing the same thing to Asian Americans now? In 1982, the Harvard University had a problem. His school had too many Jews. At least that's what he thought. As the, oh, 1922. As the country's Jewish population ballooned in the early 20th century, the Jewish portion of Harvard students increased in 1922. 1907% of the Ivy League schools were Jewish. But we lied. Well, there was some... The, that some were of deficient character. Even if they weren't, he feared they would drive away potential white Anglo-Saxon Protestant students. We're going to be American school on economic elite, as well as future owners schools like Harvard. Summer Hotel, ruined by admitting Jews meets its fate, not because of Jews it admits our bad character, but because they drive away the Gentiles. Jesus. Lowell, 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 
eventually succeeded in changing the admission standards in his Boston area university, limiting the number of Jews, according to Kerbal. Instead of admitting students solely based on academic achievement, the school began judging their surnames and photographs to determine if they were Jewish. He began classifying students as J1, J2, J3, conclusively Jewish, probably Jewish, or maybe Jewish, respectively. He evaluated their character as well, a new standard that allowed Harvard to cap the proportion of Jewish students at 15%. Jesus. The Vanishing Ivy League Jew, Campus Week. Jewish populations are falling at schools like Harvard and Yale. Should we care? Starting about 2013, the staff at the Hillel, Hillel at the University of Pennsylvania wondered what they were doing wrong. Each year, the number of students at their high holiday services, Passover seeders, and the first annual Shabbat dinners, dinner of the year, seemed to be smaller than in past years. We thought we just hit the wall, where 15 years ago, people who didn't want to go to services did so, even if out of guilt, and today they don't, said Michael Uram. The Hillel director, executive director, and campus rabbi. But after running numbers in the student body, concluded that it wasn't the whole story. While that is probably still true, what is also true is that there are just several hundred less Jews on campus. Penn was, in 2010, Penn was just under 20% Jewish, according to data. By 2016, only 13% of the campus identified as Jewish by religion, a decrease of over 600 Jewish students. Penn is far from the only Ivy League campus to note the decline. To take another example, throughout the 2000s, about 20% of incoming freshmen at Yale University identified as Jewish, according to data collected by the Yale University Chaplain's Office. In the 2010s, that number was closer to 16% for the past three years. The Harvard Crimson has reported that about 10% of incoming first-year students identified as Jewish, according to their own survey. For the incoming Harvard class of 2020, that number has dropped to 6%. So Jews are going like even less and less to, this would have been good to know about. <coughs> What are the percentages of Americans that are Jewish? There's a whole a whole other thing. Wait, 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 hold on, wait, wait. I, I don't want to get into that, but I'm just saying. Like, sure. Sure. Scoop me on one of my questions for you, Mike. That's, That's a, a valid thing to ask. What, what question is Destiny trying to answer? Well, so there was a study at, for Harvard when that affirmative action case was launched, where people were trying to figure out, like, okay, well, how much is affirmative action fucking over like white students or whatever? And one of the things that they found was that a lot of white students were actually like super on the receiving end of their own kind of affirmative action. In the case of like they had parents that worked there, they were getting athletic scholarships, or they had like donor family members, and that was why they were getting on, and that this was ma ma massively overrepresented with white people versus Latinos, African Americans, or Asian Americans, um, which is kind of like their own like unfair advantages or whatever that people don't talk about. But um, the um, but Mike is trying to say, well, actually, it wasn't white people; it was Jewish people. Those were the only people that had the advantages, not white people. Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait! I have to, I have to respond to like a whole other go thing because we've got like huge paragraphs in French research, right? Yeah. Um, so like, in terms of like, do a lot of white people feel like they might be oppressed or whatever? I'm sure that's true. But if we were to do that polling against a lot of people in the Western world, I'm sure that they also feel like they're being oppressed. Like very clearly, okay. something has gone like very yeah, awry right today. Too. Yeah, or very awry today in society. I don't think it's that uncommon when shit gets fucked in society that people look for somebody to blame or look for something to blame. I mean, like you can look at the United States after 9/11. People went crazy. We went to war with Iraq and Afghanistan. Those weren't good foreign policy decisions. We were just mad no. as fucking looking for somebody to blame. You know? Well, I mean, I, I know who to blame for those foreign policies. Sure. Uh, well, of course, we can talk about the Jewish institution or whatever. I mean, um, it's just objectively true in that. Case case that those, those wars were promoted by Jews. I mean, that's not even, like, you have to be very- I don't want to get into like the whole like Jewish conspiracy <laughs> stuff, but like- All right, fine, it's not a conspiracy. Just... I, think, I think at this point, if he's going to keep bringing it up over and over again, I think we should have, I think I should have just attacked the central point. Cause I think I look a little weak here trying to back away from it. But like, you're going to tell me that like after 9-11, like all of America was just waiting for Jewish people to like direct the hate towards like, that's just not true. Um, like in New York, for instance, this is actually, um, this was actually one of the defining moments of my life when I mo started moving away from being a Republican. Um, and it had to do with in, um, in New York City, uh, I think some Muslims wanted to get construction started on a mosque and people protested the fuck out of it. And eventually I don't think it went through. They like didn't want him out. They tried to kick him out of the city. And I remember thinking at the time, I was like, well, hold on. Like First Amendment, like freedom of religion, like what the fuck? How are you going to stop somebody from building a place of worship? This is fucked up. Like maybe he would say that there are Jews behind that movement too or something. Like, you know, um, I don't know. <laughs> Just what happened. I mean, well, it's a, why do you say the JQ Moore was obviously going to bring up? Because that's a lot of that's a big time investment, my dude, and it's a very risky topic to get into if you're not ultra prepared for it. And I explicitly told, um, I told Mike and um, Ralph that I didn't want to talk about JQ shit. I don't want to go there. I would rather talk about like more society at large. You depend. It's, I'm saying it's not like just a crackpot theory. Like objectively. The problem we is that if I would have bought, yeah, I know. The problem is that if I were to buy into a grand Jewish conspiracy theory, if I were to buy into this thing being something that has like demonstrable I'm control over you, know, I kind of want to just like, I don't really want to talk about this. And like Mike's personal life, like, is so rich that he would like bring this up. Like, you literally were fucking married to a Jewish woman that you kept hidden the whole fucking time. Like, why the fuck are we going to talk about Jewish conspiracy shit? Like, this is so stupid. Even if it was true, you're not going to be the guy to tell me. Like, you could be part of their plan. Like, this is so stupid.
United oh, States, really? I wouldn't be able to take that piece of advice from somebody that was married to somebody that was Jewish. Like, you would automatically be well, disqualified okay. from ever again, having that conversation, right? That, why, though? That's, okay, you can't well, because if you were fooled me. once, I don't know if you could be fooled again by, like, the crazy right. Jewish, like, right. you know, that's conspiracy theorists. Like, it doesn't really work that way, right? That's not actually right. any response to the point, though. That's not a response to the point. But, but it's also not a point to just say the Jews did it. But you're right? just attacking, you're, you know, that literally, like, these, this issue is an empirical issue. I could be a fucking Martian and make the point. Yeah, but the idea that the Jews led us into Iraq doesn't explain. Well, it's like, no, like, it, it, well, it's a point unto itself. It doesn't explain. What, what, like, it doesn't have to explain everything. It explains Iraq. It doesn't, though. We can explain that using much more simple, well, well, non-conspiratorial yeah, terms. You could. Yeah. So why would I appeal but to a broad? Do you have some kind of like immediate, like a priori reason to to immediately throw out the idea that like why why would it be like that the a priori that's just off the table for even examining? It's not that I mean, it would be Jewish people. It's not are, that it would be. No, it's, amongst it's, themselves. Do they have interests? Do they use no, no. their power, privilege, and money to push those interests, or no? A lot of people use power, privilege, and okay, money. Okay, but to push that's not the United question States. I asked you. The, the, is it do off, Jewish wait, people? Do hold it. on. I'm not going to be patient. First of all, if you want to do foreign policy about the Middle East, I would love to do three hours on that. I, I, I would okay? do it. We probably but, agree on a lot. Of, I'm just asking you. Well, if, if you're going to say that the reason was because of the Jews, I don't think we are going to agree on that. Okay, but like there was a ton of sentiment in the United States that was anti anything Middle East at the time. Okay, Bush Senior already had history. Okay, in Iraq, and we already had some tangible reasons that were being pushed for in the Bush administrations for going after Saddam Hussein as a leader. All of this. Those um, Rumsfeld was a lot. There were a lot of other people in Bush's cabinet that were pushing for that as well. Cheney was pushing as well. Like, what, you don't need a grand Jewish conspiracy I mean, theory it's to not explain. Grand. It's just, I'm saying, like, clearly, the majority of the people pushing for this war with Iraq and generally our Middle East policy are, are Jewish, and it's done in the interest of the state of Israel. It doesn't have to be all Jewish people. We, the only reason but this is this. Uh, is, do, do you deny that Israel has a very big influence over U.S. foreign policy? I mean, there's been academic papers. Written Israel about is it. a geopolitical tool that the United States uses to have right, preferential okay, that's stations in the Middle East. Like that's what Israel exists for. Israel is a puppet of the U.S. so that we have preferential geopolitical influence. Right, I mean, what goes on in the Middle okay, East? So why is it acceptable? Why is it acceptable? A lot of people take framing with my issue of Israel as a puppet of the U.S. Here, um, I, I, it feels to me like Israel generally serves like American geopolitical interests middle in the Middle East. I don't know if some people think that. Like the United States serves at the interest of Israel. Um, it's hard to sort out like which arguments here are dog whistles versus not dog whistles. So like for instance, a lot of people use that thing, um, the saying of like, I don't want U.S. soldiers dying for Israel because some because there's like a sinking of a ship or whatever. I need to go and do some fucking reading about this. Or some but like I, like I've I've lightly read about it and like everything is like seems pretty bullshit about um, like what that Israel sunk an American ship or whatever. I don't know. A lot of it is like really dumb. Um, I'll, I'll probably over the next few weeks like spend some time like reading more up onto all of like this crazy fucking Jewish conspiracy shit. But oh yeah, the USS Liberty. Yeah, Israel's a puppet of the U.S., but the reverse is unacceptable. Because like, are you saying okay? Are you saying that like? It's off the table to say Israel controls U.S. foreign policy or has a dominating effect over U.S. It's foreign policy. It's not that it's off the table. It's that we're putting the cart before the but horse. But you just don't believe it. I don't so believe it because, it, about it? because what of you. specifically is your problem no, with that it, theory? The problem is that it's not explanatory for U.S. involvement. It's totally, it's totally explanatory. Okay, then, I mean, okay here's the question then. Why do we support the Gulf states like Saudi Arabia who fund ISIS uh, extremists or fund Sunni extremism, which oftentimes serves as a counterbalance to Israel interests in the Middle East? Well, we're so, like, like, the, this is something I should be more familiar with, but like Saudi Arabia and Israel like have fought with each other like so much in the past. Um, there have been like so many different like in, in like areas where these guys have like had like conflicts with each other like anytime somebody i get in the same i get very frustrated when lefties do this too anytime somebody gives me like this one overarching explanation well the reason why everything is fucked is because the capitalists are fucking you like okay the reason why everything is fucked is because the jews are fucking you it's like there are so many when you start to break down like or break out like so many different s explanations um like you have to start flexing some insane level of mental gymnastics to figure out, um, like, why are people doing this thing? Well, they're actually doing it because of this thing. They're trying to hide in the background of this. And it, like, it gets really, really fucking stupid really quickly. Yeah, I am aware Saudi Arabia and Israel very recently are, like, on, on pretty good um, terms right now. But... So you argue that it's not. I would say that ISIS is directly aligned with Israel's interests. Has that ISIS ever attacked Israel? No, ISIS attacks Israel states that are actually oppositional to Israel, like Syria, like Iran. This is but actually true, um, generally, that the states that um, Saudi Arabia funds uh, terrorism against are generally states that Israel probably doesn't like either, right? Because Saudi Arabia is generally opposed to, like, Iran and, um, <clears throat> and Syria, and Israel is generally opposed to those states as well, sure. But we know that states like Israel, and we know that not every Sunni well, I mean, extremist movement gets along ISIS? with people. I mean, we got John McCain going and having meetings with them. Where are they getting their money and weapons? But there are also times when, like, ISIS has attacked, um, ISIS has taken responsibility for, I think it was two separate terrorist attacks in Israel as well. Like, um... Israel's treating them in their hospitals. It, well, I, I, dude, I fucking loathe, I loathe conspiracy theory so much. It's so fucking stupid when there's, like, this grand puppet master that you think is controlling everything. Like... 
nothing ever turns out to be that way. Like if you ever read about any conflict or any particular thing, it, it never turns out to be that there was one evil mustache twirling criminal mastermind interest group that was pushing everything. Like even when it comes to like CIA coups in other countries, like there's usually multiple players involved. There's usually regional history involved. There's usually like multi-group conflict and shit going on. It's not just one crazy mustache twirling villain that's like pulling the strings. I'm probably going to be focusing more on this JQ shit in the future, but, or maybe, oh God, it feels like such a waste of time. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I bought a book on it. We'll see. Because it depends on the particular conflict going on. Do you think that Israel sees itself as being aligned with the Gulf states? Yes. With Saudi Arabia? Absolutely. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Um, I mean, look, I can I even say, I, any terrorist attack that ever happens. Yeah, maybe. Have you ever heard of a, a documentary called uh, The Lobby? No, 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 wait, wait, hold on. I don't want, want to go like all the way. I didn't know we were going to go all yeah, the way down the path. I'm, like, just the saying, Jewish... I'm saying, like, yes, I would say Israel absolutely sees itself as aligned with Saudi Arabia and to some extent with the United Arab Emirates, a little bit less with Qatar, but there's very specific reasons with that that actually involve individual, very powerful Jews like the Kushners. But yes, absolutely, Israel is aligned with Saudi Arabia and the UAE, no question. I should have angled the conversation away from this before if I, because I didn't really want to do like JQ shit right now. And I said that going into this debate, I should have angled it off of this topic more instead of like, ugh. And they are, you know, that, that I think is no question. But then those states are also oppositional to Iran. And less oppositional to Syria, but certainly not on the side of Syria. Okay. Um, I mean, like, ISIS has literally been responsible for, like, terrorist attacks, like, in Israel. Like, in no, June, they haven't. Which in, ones? In June of 2017, the, the Jerusalem bombing attack. Like, ISIS literally took credit for those things. Um, when was that? Uh, a couple of Palestinian dudes walked into, like, a fucking hospital those, or some okay, shit. Those are Palestinians. Palestinians. They, ISIL took credit for it publicly. Uh, Palestine is not aligned with ISIS. ISIS, ISIS took credit for it publicly. Okay, I've, okay, maybe they did, but that doesn't mean they actually okay, did. Okay, let's. How about we just talk okay, about these? Were Palestinians? I'm just saying, like, if these are Palestinians that went and attacked some Jews, like that has been going on since before ISIS ever existed. <laughs> now, ISIS unambiguously was responsible for many attacks in Europe. That's <laughs> that's true. So uh, when I talk I, about I, when I, when I talk to people like um, ISIS like, is responsible for more attacks on Shiites right. in Iraq than they are on Jews. Yeah. So like when I, when I talk to people like um when I talk to like crazy lefties or when I talk about like uh, like Anita Sarkeesian, like one. Pro I think it's important to remind the audience that Mike is going off topic in the debate. It makes him look like he's pivoting. It does, but like you have to call in order for pivoting to look bad, you have to call it out when it happens. And for some reason, it's just really hard for me to see it happening in real time. Um, I don't know if it's because I'm uncomfortable telling somebody over and over and over again, because it feels like sometimes like I have to tell someone like there are debates where I think I've done this with Mike from CCP, where like there are debates when I see someone is pivoting, I'll say it like 15 times and they still pivot. Um, I know Hassan has done it to me and I know that Mike has done it to me. I'm sure conservatives done it as well. Although my debating prowess has like gotten a little bit better as I move through lefties, but like I'll talk to somebody who pivots. Oh yeah. Tree of logic was a conservative. I did it to. They will pivot over and over and over and over again because they want to bring it back into an area with, with like um of like conspiracy but they won't like they can't just answer a fucking question um i need to commit more to telling somebody like hey you're pivoting you're pivoting you're pivoting you're pivoting stop like back to the question i need to do that i need to do that way better problem that a lot of these people have is that they are incapable of analyzing any situation outside of a very particular paradigm that they have that suits their interests. When you see every single thing through the world, through the, the dialogue tree is too comfortable to them. Yeah. This lens of like Jewish conspiracy. Specific, it, well, it is. If you're trying to use like Jewish conspiracies to explain well, like not. every I'm single thing. I'm talking specifically about U.S. policy. Let's talk about who ISIS. Wait, is we're, we're not talking about U.S. policy. We're talking about like Israel, whether or not it's a, like a now, and now. Fuck. I, like I don't. Even, ah, dude. When I listen back to this, I don't know how I get like so. Wait, how did we even get to this? Um, where did this come from? It had to do with. Who's making the shots at the top of the United States um, to, to direct, like, policy or whatever? And somehow we're—and now we're talking about, like, Jews in Israel. Fuck me, dude. And the way it controls U.S. foreign policy or not. Well, I think whether or not Israel controls the U.S. or vice versa is a valid question. Yeah, that's but that's not at all what we were talking about. You hardcore pivoted there when I was just trying to address the earlier things you said about whether or not white people feel oppressed. Like, I'm calling out the pivot now, but calling out the pivot now looks bad because it looks like I'm just calling out the pivot because I'm too scared to discuss the thing. I think this looks weak when I say, like, okay, hey, you're pivoting because I've already, like, gone down that road to discuss it for, like, a couple minutes. And then it's like, okay, wait, oh, Destiny knows that he knows that the Jews are here, and now he's trying to call it a pivot back. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't look good to do that, I don't think. You have to you, you have to call out you have to call out like a pivot like immediately when it happens. Talk about like Israel like you have nothing to say like I think we can talk about like U.S. domestic policy or okay, sure. let's talk yeah, about that. So, yeah let's get away. The JQ lore has gotten so big that they can mention it in any discussion. Yeah that's the problem with conspiracy is that it seeps into every single part of society. Like I think even at this point I can use the Jewish question to explain like literally everything.
Like, like the reason why I'm in an open relationship right now is because pornography has been pushed to me from an early age that's funded by Jewish people. The reason why they push pornography to white people is to cause degeneracy in society because as white people become more degenerate, they have less children, they're outbred by other races. The degeneracy causes depression, causes you to engage in relationships where you take your girlfriend and you cuck them out to like minorities. That's why Jewish people push like BBC cuckolding and shit because they're trying to make it so that white people are giving their women away to minorities so that they have children that are non-white. Like I, like I can explain almost every single fucking problem or issue that I have in society using the Jewish question. Like, it's insane. Like, it literally seeps into, like, it's like QAnon, like, where every single possible thing that you can ever have in life that's a problem can be explained using the Jews somehow. Like, it's crazy. Um, and it's so fucking annoying. Like, um, ugh. Away from Israel, and let's just, oh, that might help to write down the topic you're probably talking about. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Love it. <laughs> okay, sure. That's great. Okay. So, <laughs> there is no reason why, um, Jesus Christ, I don't remember the original paragraph I, I was responding to. Um, in, in terms of this idea that, like, white people... Oh, I'm also letting him talk a lot, and I'm not getting my full response out. I think I mentioned that later. I need to not let people ever do that ever. I get gish way too much in conversations. Um, yeah. Salted on immigration. I mean, like, we still live in a democratic republic. Like, we still vote on our leaders all the time. Like, we still have a say in terms of, like, who gets elected. And, they, and, and they, they lie and they backstab and they don't do what we expect them to do. And, and that's a, you know, like, I mean, Donald Trump promised he would build a wall and support illegal immigrants. He hasn't done that. Because he doesn't and have he the... promised he wouldn't get us because involved Don, in the Middle because, He has done because, because Donald Trump doesn't have the political authority to unilaterally build a wall. We're, we live well, in a he democracy. He does actually now. Actually, well, yeah, I, it's still being fought through the. They're still fighting in the courts over whether or not he can declare a state of emergency and build the wall. So, my I think I should have looked this up after. My understanding is that Trump hasn't. Um, Trump wall building courts. My understanding of this after looking it up was that they ruled that some particular thing was like that he could appropriate funds for it, but I'm not sure if they 100% said that like it's all good to go now. Um, oh, this is on the, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. This probably will have to go this is January 9th, 2020. This probably has to go to the Supreme Court, right? If you're going to continue talking with all writers, you're not going to be particularly enthused because this Jewish shit is like half of what they talk about and they support a ton of their arguments with it. No. They have given up and just blame Jews now. Hey. Do you think there's any form of cooperation between Jews through things like nepotism and they exaggerate, or do you think there's nothing to it? No, I'm sure there's some form of nepotism. I'm sure that there are some Jewish people that know, like, other Jewish people that are like, hey, bro, like, let's cover each other. The same way that, like, alumni in schools will do it, or people with the same last name will do it, or people that, you know, come from some... I'm sure that does happen. Of course, it must, right? Like, but this happens with all groups of people, right? Hey, instead of talking about race, shouldn't you steer the debate towards values? Difference in what people value seems to cause the problems. You can't complain about someone who believes in the same core values. It was the juice. Nice. Yeah, um, I think we get there eventually, but... Oh, no, no, he won that. 100%, so the wall is being constructed right now if I go and I look or whatever. No, it's not. That's my point. Why is it not being built then if he won Because that? he's not doing it. Why is he not doing it? Because he's lied to us. Then why did he go through the process of going through courts to do it? <laughs> hey, <laughs> Destiny, do first time so... you're here coming from the Wired article. I have yet to see you violently convulse in your chair violently, and I feel lied to. Thanks, bud. Feels bad, man. I think that this line of questioning is usually really positive. If somebody has a conspiracy theory... Most of the time, there are some actions that can't be explained with said conspiracy theory, and they have no... I think that this type of um, questioning is really powerful, and this is kind of what you should hit at more with people that are, like, conspiracy theorists. Over whether or not he can declare a state of emergency and build the wall. No, no, he won that. He won that. 100%, so the wall is being constructed right now if I go and I look or whatever. No, it's not. That's my point. Why is it not being built then if he won Because that? he's not doing it. Why is he not doing it? Because he's lied to us. Then why did he go through the process of going through courts to do it? <laughs> Beats me. Do you think that maybe that's an important question you should ask yourself? Yes. No, it's exactly an important question. So is, the, is, 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 is Trump Jewish? Wait, all the wait, time. So is, you saying that like white people, when I say white people having insults, I'm saying they were betrayed by the politicians they voted for. I shouldn't let him get away with that. Politicians lie all the time. Trump isn't a politician though, right? Or maybe you say he is now because he's a president, but he's specifically not a politician when he was elected. It's not like, like politicians lie all the time. It has a, There's a lot of assumptions baked into that. Why do politicians lie? Because they need corporate interests, because they need donors. Well. Trump is a billionaire. He shouldn't need to lie. What do you mean? He's not embedded in like all, all of politics. He doesn't have a political history. He's not a career politician. Like.
for. That's exactly my point. Trump lied. So Trump, okay, so let me just follow this, okay? So you're saying that Trump promised us a wall, then yeah. he tried to do the wall, but then the court stopped him. Why didn't he just stop there? Why did he go through the trouble of fighting it in the courts and then getting it overturned, but now he stopped again? How, how does that make sense? I, again, beats me. I would love an answer to that. That's a question I would ask Trump if I could sit down with him. Hey, you actually finally wrangled this through the Supreme Court. You got authorization from the Supreme Court that your state of emergency was valid, and you could appropriate certain amounts of funds from the Defense Department to building a wall, and you have— A pivot isn't always an intentional trap. Similar to how fallacies aren't often intentional. It doesn't mean either allowable. It is only a trap if used intentionally um, with some people, other people like Destiny did, some didn't. You can only talk about C, but only answer— Yeah, yeah, wait. Um, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume you're talking to someone else, but like, I don't think people that pivot all the time, I don't think that they're like in their head like, okay, I'm not capable of addressing the argument that my opponent is bringing up here. I'm going to pivot it to another area where I'm more confident in my argument. I don't think that that— that's the process. I think that typically what happens is, is you have memorized a whole bunch of different responses to different types of questions, and your goal is to usually move the argument into those areas as quickly as possible where you feel very confident in giving answers. I think that's where a lot of pivoting comes from. I don't think it's like some intentional devious plot that somebody has to, to undermine you. It's just something that people are more comfortable doing. And instead of engaging with an argument at face value, they kind of try to like move the area into something more comfortable talking about. Yeah not done it what is going on do you think that if you That's run a into like question. a lot of those issues where you cannot possibly explain why people are acting in certain ways that maybe the paradigm through which you're viewing their decision making process is not good that maybe you need to shift a little in terms of how you view well, can you explain that um What's i didn't know that paradigm? it went through but if i had to guess my guess is going to be that trump doesn't have the political capital throughout congress to get something like that done that even as a policy he need congress he's got he trump had... himself doesn't but the republican party that's largely that helps him maybe with fundraising that helps right. support him. something else just helped me so much going through the the lefty arc is having a better understanding of how government works like allows you to see through so many more decisions in a much more understandable manner than like they did before. Like before I viewed things politically like very distinctly. You have Congress that does things, the president does things, here's the powers, that's how they're gonna act. But I didn't really understand how complicated the interplay was between like Congress and Trump and how beholden Trump might be to Congress um, in terms of like political capital. That's like a term and an idea that I never really understood much before. Like maybe, maybe you could call a vote and get maybe one little small thing passed, but it might compromise your ability to compromise on future legislation. It might hurt your ability to compromise on future legislation. It might cost you, you know, votes in some district that are vulnerable that you need a vote, uh, a senator to come in on or a uh, congressman to come in on. Like these, this interplay of things are things that I didn't understand well. And I noticed that a lot of other people don't understand it very well either. Uh, when you say things like, oh, Trump doesn't need Congress at all to get any of this done, like Trump probably doesn't want to make the entire Republican Party's enemy. Trump probably needs some senators and congressmen to come together for legislation that he champions. Trump, Trump probably needs some, right? Because the Republicans are going to want his help when it comes to campaigning for re-election in some districts. So I think there is a back and forth there. You can't just pretend that, um, you can't just pretend that all these things are disconnected elements that move independent of one another. People that engage in conspiracy oftentimes don't see how things are connected. They usually try to connect them in their mind using the, the conspiracy. Yeah. In office, these guys probably care about that's, how the public. Yeah, it's a very valid point. Okay, of, of the others in the Republican Party might be holding him back from doing. Sure, that. So, I would totally agree with that. Okay, then you would agree that we live in a democracy where people's voices are being heard through their representatives. But who, who that votes for Republicans? Like generally speaking, like the majority of people voting Republicans want this. And on top of that, like immigration reform, uh, in terms of actually removing illegal immigrants, getting rid of a birthright citizenship. And bringing jobs and things back to America, like, these are very popular things. And in fact, they're most popular in the states. I shouldn't have let him. I don't know. I hope I don't let him walk away. That that's just not true. They're not. Those are not popular things. It's not true. Where the Republican senators don't do them. So the question I would ask: Do the uh, just big business and lobbying and things like that? Do those elements come in as uh, things that will thwart the popular will on certain issues? So could, could a politician potentially say he's going to do something? And then not follow through because it's contrary to the interests of his big donors. Is that something that fits into your worldview? I mean, it, it could if it's explanatory. But when we start to have to make like asterisk, well, I can explain. It. I mean, like, well, example, no, you couldn't. You just told me you don't know why Trump would not. Like Trump is a billionaire. But you I don't have to know about that one specific thing to be able to explain other things. So, for example, Ben Ben Sass is the senator from Nebraska. Now, generally speaking, the people in Nebraska are very much anti-immigration. They would like to cut off immigration. They would like to remove illegal farm workers from all the farms in Nebraska and things like that. Yet Ben Sass continually sides with the big agricultural lobbies that would like to increase illegal immigration or, or would like to somehow— Nebraska is an agricultural state. Like, that's not really that surprising. Uh, formalize those illegal immigrants that have entered the country illegally and make them into temporary guest workers or some other kind of status so that they can keep agricultural wages low. So the people will vote for him. And then they will kind of stop paying attention or not looking, and then you know a vote will happen, and boom, like Ben says, votes for a bill that's not in their interest. I mean, I, I don't see why you would have. This is such a thing that is so crazy that you're like, well, is that explanatory or not? I mean, this is something that is actually a fairly standard complaint about American politics. It doesn't even touch on issues of, of Jewishness or not. It's just corporate lobbying thwarting the will of the people. I mean, it's a standard liberal complaint. So we have that so, complaint. Yeah. So like we can say like 
corporate lobbying and, and just like appeal to that broadly. I mean, I've debated a lot of lefties that like to do the same so that we don't have but to again, do like, any... Like, hold on, wait, like, come on, come on, wait, I, gotta, I have to be able to respond. Like, he cuts wait, me off respond. so much. It's so irritating. I finally am like done with like getting cut off where I can't even fucking start. I can't get... People do this to me so much. I hate that everybody accuses me of gish galloping. People do this shit where they would talk a fucking paragraph at me or two or three and then as soon as I start responding, they cut me off on my first sentence. Like, dude, fucking chill. Onto one thing, okay? Because it's not fair. Because every time I bring up an issue, it's either Jewish conspiracy or corporate lobbying. Like, well, let's talk about it. When we say corporate lobbying, what type of corporate lobbying would be super interested in maintaining like immigration? It's probably going to be corporations related to agriculture, right? Right. I'm from Nebraska. Guess what? A lot of people outside of Omaha and Lincoln are interested in agriculture. Um, yeah. Even if that was true, that it was corporate lobbying that was backing up Ben Sass, corporate lobbying isn't what shows up at the polls to vote for him. It wouldn't surprise me if a lot of Nebraskans voted for him because he was trying to protect agriculture. That's not really that crazy to me, and it's not even explained by corporate lobbying. It sounds to me like there's a lot of people in Nebraska, and probably Iowa, and those other Midwestern states that I spent 30 years in, that probably are really protected of their uh, farm industry. That's it. I mean, yeah, but we're. T so I think that's a really strong point. I think that's good. He flounders here. We need we need to f following conspiracies more. I think is is good here. What, what like in terms of like w when you're trying to use a conspiracy to explain something that can be explained so simply otherwise. Like, well, actually, the Jewish people are controlling corporations that are causing agricultural uh, firms to be more popular in you know the fucking Midwest. Like, okay, but people in the Midwest are fucking farmers, dog. What the fuck do you mean? I don't need a conspiracy to explain that. I think that I think that was a good line of questioning. So, I mean, that's just. The, but again, you have as much evidence. You don't, are you, do you have evidence for this, or is this just something that you're? you're and then now I think I think now he looks weak. I think that that question. Do you have any? Do you have any evidence that I think that looks really weak after that line of questioning? Farm because he was trying to protect agriculture. That's not really that crazy to me, and it's not even explained by corporate lobbying. It sounds to me like there's a lot of people in Nebraska, and probably Iowa, and those other Midwestern states that I've spent 30 years in. They probably are really protected of their uh, farm industry. That's my it. question should have. My question afterwards is: Do I need evidence that Iowa and Nebraska are heavily agriculturally based regions? That should be my question. After that would have been a good response. I mean, yeah, but we're t so so. I mean, that's just. The, but again, you have as much evidence. You don't. Are you, do you have evidence for this, or is this just something that you're you're theorizing as something that could explain it because you don't like my explanation? Well, I mean, like my explanation is pretty simple. Doesn't rely on any grand conspiracy. But it's I not. Look, the idea that big companies lobby the government to protect their various business interests in various spheres. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if you want to call that like a grand conspiracy, like we could go into specifics of various sectors and industries. If you want to call that like a big grand conspiracy, then I feel like you're just sort of like that's. You can attack anyone. That complains about it. You can talk, you can almost attack any problem that same sure. way. So it's not a specific attack on this issue. The sure. question is, so let me, can let me, we look. can we look into something like why, when the American people, generally speaking, overwhelmingly do not want illegal immigration, and, and do not want this, that this keeps happening? Because this is a descriptive fact that I need to contend with. I think I do eventually, but like I can't let him keep making this descriptive fact. Like, oh well, most Americans don't want it, so what's keeping because I don't think that's true, and he hasn't demonstrated it. And I've demonstrated the opposite. I thought earlier in some of the polling that I linked, but like. That and question, when you say that, like, do Americans want illegal immigration or want immigration? Like, that's an easy thing. Americans want immigration control. This is actually a fairly, <laughs> fairly standard. The, the problem is that, like, a lot of these questions don't really mean much. Like, if I were to ask, for instance. Well, it means a lot. It's about whether or not it's going to be illegal immigrants taking people's jobs and lowering wages. This or, is a really complicated point that I have to explain in a really careful manner. So, like, sometimes you can ask somebody, like, would you be in favor of, like, oh, so, for instance, like, would you be in favor of tariffs to protect jobs in the United States? People might vote yes on that. But even though they vote yes on that, what they're really voting yes on is like, well, I want to pay more on goods and services and then not get any jobs back at all. Like, are you really voting yes? On, do you really feel that way? like you probably don't have the wherewithal to understand what exactly it is that you're voting here when it comes to things like tariffs? This is a really hard point to explain, though, without making it sound like I'm trying to hand wave a whole bunch of data. And it really depends on the types of questions we're asking as well. Um, might mean that your company goes out of business and you're not in the United States anymore. So when you ask something like, hey, like, are you in favor of illegal anything? Chances most are, people most don't own companies. companies. No, but a lot of people work for companies. Right? And if those companies get fucked and go out of business, those people lose their jobs. Look at all the big manufacturing firms in the Northeast. You're like saying the that illegal immigration protects jobs. N-E-C-O-O-M-E-R-S in the chat. Immigrants do protect jobs. Yeah, of course. It's undeniable. Um, I mean, like, we, we can get into further detail about that. Um, I mean, th this idea that, like, the, the problem that I have with conspiracy is that if you want to point to some... Wait, so wait, 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 no, wait, can I just call on this real quick? If you want to point Jesus to corporations Christ. influencing some particular thing, it's really easy if I have, like, a more concrete example to work with. So, for instance, the IRS doesn't fill out our tax forms for us. Why? That seems like bullshit. Well, I can point to specific senators that are supported by Intuit that Intuit feeds lines of legislation to in order for them to make it so that the IRS can't fill out our tax forms. That's an example of corporate lobbying that disproport or that um, negatively impacts Americans. That's bullshit. I can buy that. But when you tell me things like... This is... I, so, I'm trying to give an example here. This is a good argument. If you want to say that there's a particular conspiracy surrounding something that's fine but you have to be able to point to something besides like the spooky jewish man hiding behind like give me an example like show me like an actual specific thing that like is real and not some crazy bullshit like th like th to demonstrate said conspiracy like we can do this with conspiracies that have existed to the cia in the past like operation um no not operation um oh god what was the what was the crazy uh, mk like mk ultra like shit like that we can point to stuff like that um 
but like give me something specific you can't just say the jews and then hand wave every single thing like you got to be able to point to something somehow all these people in nebraska are voting for a guy that's doing things that ends up protecting agriculture in the u.s i don't need a conspiracy to explain that i don't need corporate lobbying to explain it like that just sounds like nebraska that, interested okay in. okay so you're but you're assuming that the interests of like say the uh big agricultural companies which is very much aligned with illegal immigration with with high levels of immigration keeping wages down uh, comports with the interests of people that vote for it. Now, when people vote Republican, and these states are overwhelmingly Republican, one of the biggest motivators of people voting Republican, and you can look at public opinion data, is in fact opposition to immigration. So it doesn't make sense that continue. Okay. Most important issues to Republicans. I just want to see if that's true. Immigration is at 78%. Healthcare and the economy up there as well. Um, I wonder if we can break this out by party. Okay, Republicans. The importance of issues for midterm voting by party identification. Um, what was this 2018? Climate change is 27%. Uh, immigration is 84%. So this is one of the biggest issues for Republicans. The economy is first, followed by immigration. those people that vote for those Republicans to get that policy don't get it unless we look at something else that's influencing them. And I, I think that essentially you're saying you have an instance of a, a particular interest, like uh, you know, do, doing your taxes and stuff, and, and these particular companies have lobbied to keep a certain thing alive. Sure, I believe you. I have no problem believing that. But it's interesting that you just you will you will throw it out and then characterize what I'm saying as a grand conspiracy when I've actually laid out where the interests are, where the you know the public opinion lies, and then how it gets forwarded and what the business interests that are doing that are. So you want to continue to characterize it as a grand conspiracy, but it, it's it's really not. And this is. I just, it's a little bit, it's a little bit strange that you would, you would continue, you know, and I'm, I'm wondering, like, will you always, like, is there at some point where you would accept an explanation like that? Or would you always just continue to say, like, well, I don't think that's explanatory, or that's not the sure, good, so you know, we, we you have can to always at, do that. No, so, like, it's easy then, to, like, like, what you believe becomes the arbiter of whether it's true so or So it's not what I believe. So it's really easy to throw, like, a single poll out and be like, 52% of Americans believe this, and then try to extrapolate from that, like, a ton of behaviors. But, like, we have to look at the questions being asked, we have to see how those play into Americans' lives, <laughs> and then we have to see, like, would we expect to follow up behavior um, based on this singular question? Americans so, wait, 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 so here's, against so immigration. Americans have also consistently said that they don't care if they become a minority in the country. So, like, we can go by, like random poll data if we want but like i'm sure that your response to that would be well just because an american says they don't a white person says they don't care if they would be a minority of the country doesn't mean that they would accept that if they knew what it meant for them right like we could go further into that polling data much the same where if you were to tell me or, or for instance we could say like how many americans i think that's a good point are in favor of or oppose sweatshops i'm willing to bet that a vast majority of americans will say something like sweatshops are horrible but if i were to say hey how do you feel about getting rid of all sweatshops and now those nikes that you're wearing are going to cost 650 dollars sure. each okay. they're probably like, okay well fuck hold on right so like we can ask a simple polling question like do you think that we should enforce this thing or that thing and people are like oh yeah that sounds really good like, illegal immigration yeah get rid of that blah 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 but, when, but like so another great example of this is for instance like when we talk about like medicare for all on the democrat side when you pull people and you say do you like medicare for all it's like 89 percent or whatever like approving like yeah i love that but when you ask them do you um do you approve of government insurance making it so that all private insurance is illegal those numbers plummet like 24 percent. so it absolutely matters like how you ask a question and what the results of that polling question are to see how people like follow up on it rather than just saying are you for or against something that's illegal because that's always but i'm not, I'm not talking about like polling data specifically i'm just saying like a very consistent theme of republican voters is that they have wanted a control on immigration i mean i just think that this is again if, if you're saying like is this a, is this a premise that you are just denying um, it's just I don't know if people really do want. Okay, it. so you don't know, but like. Well, okay, what I'm saying is that like, it doesn't surprise what, what me. What would it people, take for you to believe that? It, I would believe it if people were to stop like buying products or supporting industries that are massively supported by immigration. Then I would believe it. Kind of like when Americans complain <laughs> about high gas prices, but our most bought, bought cars right. are like F-150s and Chevy Silverados. It doesn't seem like gas prices are that important to you, even if you want to complain about them, right? Much the same that if you complain about immigration all the time, but you continue to buy you know like really cheap goods that are sourced from places that rely heavily on immigration. Well, it seems like immigration isn't really something you care about that much. Like you like those cheap goods and you'll support it. And I don't know if you will support the anti-immigration measures if those come up and it causes you to have to pay for a whole much more shit. Like we see with the Trump tariffs, by the way, that have caused a ton of damage. In the agriculture industry. We put those tariffs up, everybody was in favor of them, and now people are like, oh, hold on, we're getting fucked by these. We're not in favor of these anymore. And you've seen the opinions of a lot of those things change over time, like the tariffs, for instance, in the Midwest especially. So then people just don't know what the hell they're talking about. A lot of the times, the yeah, of course, yeah. People are upset and angry. I think you know this. I think we both know this. People are upset and pissed off at a lot of things in society today. And it's really fucking hard to point out what is causing that problem. You know, ISIS recruitment videos, you know, oftentimes look the same as like BLM recruitment videos. Like, hey, you feel like you have no purpose in life? Feel like everybody's trying to fuck. Is, so like this, people, uh, apparently some people started tweeting out that I'm, I'm trying to say like BLM is like fucking ISIS. Uh, my only goal here is to point out like any broad movement typically tries to find people that feel like they're disaffected by society and fucked by society and then try to bring them in and be like, hey, look, like, do you feel like, you know, people are racist? against you institutionally you're fucked blah, blah 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 well like we can explain why that's going on and that we can give you like a purpose or a place or whatever a lot of people are trying to say destiny says that blm is like isis here people got really fucking upset <laughs> at this comparison holy shit you over feel like nobody in the world understands your reply to your problem feel like you're disconnected from all society come and join us and we'll give you a purpose jordan peterson does this you guys do this i do this to some extent everybody does this of course everybody's identified that everybody in the western world is lost and purposeless right now but that doesn't mean we can just point to like one thing and blame all the problems on it. it'll be an easy fix that's disingenuous to sell it that way i've never said that though. 
You've never said that. Like, you, you're literally on here telling me that white people need to be allowed to advocate for themselves. That's exactly sure. what you're selling, of course. But that's not the same thing as saying I can point to literally one cause of all problems and solve it with like a magic sweep of my hand or something. Well, like, like it sounds like, like you're not... saying that if we could get rid of all the non-white people or get never rid of all said, the Jewish people. Of, when did I say let's get rid of all non-white people and be great? Okay, so what exactly are you advocating? I am saying that the United States, as a majority white country, should look after the interests of the majority, and that this is not uh, an imposition because other countries have their majorities and they can look after their people. Like the, the idea that the United States actually is specifically geared towards attacking the interests of, of the white majority. Where what, what do, it, when you say that, what do you mean by that? When you say look after the interests of the majority, what does that mean to you? I mean, you could play that. What, what, the interest of the majority is. Do you think that anyone has an interest in becoming a minority? Do you think that white people should like want that? It's important to push on this question because, like, well, what the fuck do you mean by that? Are you saying that we should be able to literally like fucking? you know, like, deport all brown people. Like, you need to, like, 100%, like, what do you mean by that? You have to push people on this. And then, now I'm finally starting to do this a little bit. Um, Based on polling data, it seems like most people don't care. But then people also oppose immigration. Okay. And even, also, the other thing is, I don't, even if, even if, like, a majority of people don't care, I care, and a lot of people do care, so I don't have to have a majority of people believing in order to advocate for a position, do I? Well, but you're just, you were just talking about how you should be able to look after the majority, but now you're a minority of people, so then I shouldn't care but, about your I mean, opinions based yeah, on your own statements. Like, what do you mean? Like, but that's so what though? Like my political what do you mean position, so what? Wait, no, I agree. So what? I don't think that the majority matters. But... Position have to be supported by a majority of people to be valid. First of all, I would argue that the majority of white people do have a have expressed in a certain way some kind of desire to either control immigration on racial grounds or just by their own behavior have expressed a desire to live in communities with other white people and and without people that aren't white. And these are things again. You talk about revealed behavior. Well, absent government housing regulations and things like that, do you think you would have integrated racially integrated neighborhoods? I mean, you might have some, but uh, generally speaking. And in fact, the fact that it's actually blatantly illegal to even sell real estate based on the premise that your neighbors will be white. This is illegal in all 50 states. Yeah, of course. A realtor literally is not allowed to make a selling point of a home. This is a white neighborhood. And in fact, yeah. if you ask a realtor, mm -hmm. if you ask a realtor what kind of people live here, they say, I can't tell you. I am literally legally forbidden from telling you what you should do is come here on a Sunday and take a walk around and take a look for yourself and see and then decide because they literally cannot do that. So. The expressed desire of white people is generally to live around more white people, and this also comes out politically in positions on immigration. This comes out when people pull their kids out of school, when they move out. This is a descriptive claim that I should have just been like, okay, we need to take one moment and source this. Because I can't, this idea that like these white people all really just want to live around white people, I, I let him like say this over and over again, but we've never, we've never actually demonstrated this anywhere. This has never been demonstrated. After a certain number of non-whites come in, and things like that. And my point is that, sure, it's entirely possible that directly asking a lot of white people their opinion on this won't result in a, a, a generally um, a distribution of opinion that would reflect specifically my view. But that's, I could, I could give a number of explanations for that behavior. One would be people are afraid because they know that if they come out and advocate for white people, they will be socially ostracized, potentially financially ostracized. Uh, people that are my listeners and, and fans and friends have expressed anxiety about this constantly if they find out that, that I've advocated for whites that, you know, they're going to have my job. Why, why, would, why should someone fear their job for that? If there's not some kind of anti-white system in place, why would it be? You can advocate for blacks, you can advocate for Mexicans, Hispanics, you can advocate for Jews. I mean, in fact, you, you better freaking advocate for Jews. So, okay, so to and, address and, this particular question. So, so, I'm interested in promoting the interests of whites. And suddenly, I mean, fundamentally, that in and of itself answers the question of, of whether or not the system is rigged against whites. So, uh, okay. So I, I don't want to like, I don't want to like dive into like data because we agreed not to do this in the beginning. But I, right. I just like, Here's like a simple Pew poll that I'm familiar with. Here's a Gallup poll that I'm familiar with. First so like this, this actually makes me look bad when I say I don't want to dive into data because I really should. Be, I, but I just, I didn't want to get into like hammering all like the polls, but I think I'm about to dive into it. So that's okay. But he keeps citing this thing that's just not true. This idea that all these white people want to live in an all white place. It's just not true anywhere. Like, honestly, even amongst white people, even amongst Republicans, this idea that whether or not um, white people come, become a minority is like a big deal, that the vast majority of people either think it's Thanks good or they don't Thanks for the endless hours of entertainment. Like, Love your YouTube and streams. Laughing face, you are legit the only streamer with almost a way so logical arguments. Keep doing the good work, smiley face. Wow, you know me, I try to be the arbiter of logic, my dude. The pe so that doesn't seem to be a big issue. When it comes to talking about how do the people, um, oh shoot, how do the people feel about, like, um, like immigration levels, do they want it to decrease? Do they want it to stay the time? Do they want it to increase? This idea that there's this huge conglomerate of Americans that are all together, or, or I should say like a huge group of white Americans that are all together saying we don't want more immigration. I don't even know if that's true. I, I haven't seen polling data that, that bears that. I, now, that's not to say that it's not out there, but like this idea, like everything that you say like is true, like people want to live in their own communities. Yeah, of course. But the idea that if those communities were just white, that would somehow make things better. I don't think that's true. I think well, it's a really naive okay, solution. Yeah, that, wait, wait, hold on. Okay, hold on. That's you just saying. Uh, that oh, wait, wait. I'm, not, I'm just talking about that. Uh, well, I know, but like you're talking like 10 paragraphs and like when I see two sentences, you interrupt me. Like, okay.
so there's like a lot of like kind of like I don't want to call them like weasel words, but when we say things like people pull out their kids from school because of black people in schools, this is not like a widespread thing where all these white people are pulling all their white kids out of schools. Maybe in like the in the 50s and 60s, like maybe this happened more, but like this is not a thing that happens today at mass where all these white people are pulling their kids out of schools. You know, if you want to talk about like living in white neighborhoods because you know we like living in white neighborhoods, it's probably because those neighborhoods tend to be really fucking wealthy because white people in general tend to be pretty wealthy. But this idea that if we could just cobble the other together, races. That, like all of a sudden our problems would go away, you're, it's, it's, you're selling snake oil. You're, like there are a lot of problems in today's society that isn't going to be like solved by just moving all the white people together and pretending these problems don't exist. It's not going to make people get out of their houses more. It's not going to make people stop logging, you know, 90 hours a week in World of Warcraft. It's not going to make people pick up hobbies or Twitch, go to a lot of Prime and Nasty more, or Time, original, like voting for their you know interests. Or everything like these problems don't get solved by just only having white people together. I don't know why we pretend it would. And these are all real problems that should be addressed. Okay, I mean, again. The, the issue is like, a you know, d does it need to be? Uh, do do I need to have a majority of people that necessarily believe like exactly what I believe in order to advocate for it? Um, I would argue, obviously, not part of the reason I do what I do is because I'm seeing something. As as you said, a lot of times people don't see the big picture in things. Uh, now you could say it's a grand conspiracy, or whatever. But the, the question is like, I I'm seeing a, a bigger picture that involves th things that I think will be bad consequences down the road. People are being myopic; they're not looking at it. Perhaps they're answering certain kinds of questions because they're afraid. And, and the fact, if, if you were to tell me, like, hey, Mike, you know, most white people don't agree with you, I would say, okay, I, I can live with that. My views are still mine, and I'm going to advocate for them. So the question really then is, um, if I'm saying I have this, this view of, of how things work, and you're saying that's just a grand conspiracy, you need to look into the nuts and bolts of this or that, uh, sure, I'll agree that we can always get more specific. And, but the question is, you know, are we looking to get more specific to, with a view to, like, just de deconstructing any idea? And I've never said, you know, white people living all together will solve all problems. One of my major complaints, actually, about society today is that, the conversations that are had about problems are really geared to specifically excluding any kind of idea that white people are even a group that has an interest. And if that's the case, then I think a big part really of what makes you it. a like, compelling debater that that. is that you are willing to go there on all sorts of topics like the JQ or whatever BS. Unfortunately, it looks weak to these people when you say stuff like I don't want to go there. Yeah, but it's better to not go into some topics than to go there and not be prepared for it. And like when you're dealing with grand conspiracies, it requires like a ton of like preparation in order to deal with every single claim um, related to said conspiracy. So I welcome this arc bitch degree the degree. Of it is literally oh. what goes on on social media where people try to advocate for these things. Like, like advocate for what things? Like, what is an issue that we advocate for that white people just can't be allowed to like be a part of the conversation? Like, what are we talking about? Like, is this like the, the international dreadlock society? Where, where are all these institutions that white people are being forced out of not being able to shoot hoops? Like in the downtown, like all black neighborhood. I'm curious, what are these? Well, okay, would you deny that there is an issue with uh, people that advocate for a pro-white position being censored on the internet? <laughs> that there is a problem with people. That... Well, I mean, you might not think it's a problem. Would you deny it's happening? Um, hold on, these are really vague words. What do you mean when you say pro-white position? Like people that are white on, nationalists or white. Like, again, no, no, wait, 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 hold on, wait, wait. Don't say come on to me, okay? Because when you say pro white position, that could go to anything that things that I talk about, or I might say, like, hey, like, here are a couple ways that, like, man, being white really sucks in this case, this case, all the way to where somebody's like, um, you know, we need to kill every single non white in the US. So you can't just say, like, pro white positions. That could mean a ton of different things. You gotta be a little bit more specific. Like, are Nazis or white supremacists or white nationalists being excluded from some online platforms? Yeah, for sure, of course that happens. Are there some people caught in the crossfire that aren't that extreme that shouldn't be banned from those platforms again? Yeah, that definitely happens as well, for sure, of course. What, what would be, like, a, a valid uh, pro white position that you, I mean, in what way? Because again, you can always say pro white. What does that mean? What do these things mean? What if I said I was pro-black or pro-Mexican? Pro now you can say like, okay, what does what does that mean? I mean you can always no, I know I can answer what that means. Yeah, I can answer what that means. So when okay. you talk about pro-black or pro-Mexican, usually what you're talking about is there are certain institutions in the United States that seem to be geared against these people. So when we talk about black people, we can talk about an institution like the criminal justice system appears to be geared against these people, or we could say like a pro-men position against like parts of the criminal justice system in relation to um, like children, like family courts that seem to be geared against like men. Usually when you talk about like advocacy for a position, you have a group of people that is disadvantaged in some way, and that's why they need an advocacy group. Yeah. You don't usually advocate for the majority opinion. That's why I don't understand why. But, you the, my, but you've just said my opinion is not the majority. Well, sure, but you're the one claiming you're advocating for all white people. We don't need to advocate for white people. Now, there might well, be that's, classes. Your, that's your opinion. I disagree. Yeah, but on what basis? On the because, basis that white people, that white supremacy... Because, because basically you are saying that there is, there is basically no need to even do it. I mean, that alone, and, and the fact that you, anybody that does, gets excluded. So, exa for, for example, like, we talk about immigration. If I say I want to limit immigration because I want to retain a white majority in the United States, is this going to be a position that is going to be conducive to my future prospects in business or even just having an online profile? Because I'll tell you right now, it's not. Is that a valid position? Is it, can a white person simply say, I want to limit immigration because I want to keep the majority white? And if they can't, then you have to acknowledge that there's, there is a system in place to systematically exclude that point of view from polite discussion. Sure. So the, the problem that I'm running into and in, in understanding your argument is you're saying that white people as a majority do need advocacy. But then when I yes, ask you for an example, you're giving, me, you're giving me a, an extreme minority opinion that you're trying to advocate for. That minority opinion is not held by the majority of white people. If anybody says they want to keep some area majority white, generally racist positions aren't usually looked upon very favorably in a post-civil rights era in the United States. So it's not very okay, surprising that, to me. Again, why, why is that though? 
Is that because that's what people really think, or is that because people are feeling certain social pressures to not advocate for themselves to the point where they're afraid that if they even say that, that they will get in a lot of trouble? And wait, actually, but, but, but again, people won't advocate. Have you seen? No, wait, no, wait, yeah, wait, no, I don't want to go saying, over saying, reliance people on won't, You're saying people won't advocate for themselves, but we just agreed most white people aren't trying to say that they don't want to be a minority, so they're not. They don't need to advocate for themselves. I, I don't actually agree with that because again, I don't know anything about that. So you know, I'll do your thing. I just don't know. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. Ah, uh, okay. I think this looks really weak here. So a lot of this debate. Okay, so this is something that I could have identified way earlier. A lot of this debate rests on this empirical observation that the majority of white opinion is being suppressed by some crazy conspiracy, that most white people do want to live in the blah, blah, blah. But now that I've actually presented a data point, a data point, a datum that is contrary to that, he's, he's less, he's more reluctant to actually engage in the conversation now. Oh, well, I don't believe it, blah, 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 blah that when we discovered, because that empirical fact kind of grounds his entire argument, because of his, because we learned that most white people don't actually want that, well, then we don't have a grand conspiracy that we need to explain why the will of the people isn't being followed. Um, I should have honed in on that way earlier. It's taken me 52 minutes in the debate to kind of hone in on that single descriptive fact that kind of makes everything fall apart. Um, hold on, I'll be right back one second. I'm gonna use this real quick looked at it or whatever but no my point is this they're actually look have you are you familiar again this is why i wanted to have some public opinion polling now 39 percent, according to the reuters ipsos poll in 2017 39 percent of whites said they do feel like they're under attack okay uh and and so or 39 percent of americans said white people are under attack it's entirely possible some of now if i now if i would have been more familiar with that polling data i could have quoted a whole bunch of other things about how most of those people wanted to protect american diversity about how that knowing more of this polling data would have helped me so much here i find that a lot of the people that i debate right or left or whatever usually rely on citing something that the other person is not familiar with and that the more familiar you become with their sources the, the less those sources are actually supporting any narrative that they <laughs> that they're trying to spin people weren't white but the point is that seems to me to be a substantial number of people but then there's another further question of does a view simply have to be accepted by a majority in order for it to be valid in some way or not my opinion is we are going to be in trouble as a group of people given the immigration going the way it is, given a whole host of other issues, and the fact that advocacy for whites, period, is not is really off the table. And then there's, there's theories floating around, like white privilege, things that demonize whites. I saw today, I literally saw today, some black woman who is a, some kind of medical doctor, supposedly, that proposes a theory that is published in The Lancet, respected medical publication, where she's basically saying, oh, those deaths of despair that white people are, are, are experiencing, whether they're about you know, opiate abuse, liver disease from drinking too much, uh, suicide due to hopelessness, increased divorce rates, lower birth rates, these things that white people experience that are increasing, and they're increasing for whites at a higher rate than others. She says, the only reason that's happening is because those people think of themselves as white, and if they stop thinking of themselves as white, then these problems will go away. And you want to talk about a pro an issue that is like, A, it's like you're going to deconstruct who somebody is and say it's your fault for even thinking you are what you are, and that's why these particular social problems that have increased affecting your community uh, are, are we gonna just write them off and say it's it's your fault for not thinking right? This is accepted in medical journals. Well, like, wait, 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 when you say when you about. say first of all, when you say that it's accepted in medical journals, the fact well, that something is, is it's, published. It's, it's the Lancet. I mean, is white privilege a theory that is generally promoted in academia across colleges? Is this is there things like white privilege and theories like this that are promoted in academia and across colleges or students? I think anytime somebody tries to attack the concept of white privilege, I think I should just we should immediately just stop and have a conversation. Okay, because like it's pretty inarguable that being white. All else equal, it's going to be a net benefit in society. Like, it's you have to engage in a pretty severe level of delusion to actually take issue with that. I think anytime somebody starts on this bullshit, it's like, well, there is no such thing as white people. Like, okay, really, bro? Like, really, bro? Like, you don't like all else equal? You don't think that like that's something that um that's something I should just stop and have a discussion about like instantly. Subjected to this kind of education. Even even if that was I'm true, not, this is a basic, easy answer question to answer. Are students subjected to this kind of education? Of a single study in Lancet? No, no, no. no. I'm talking about white privilege theory. Yeah, the idea that white privilege exists. Yeah, of course. You, you, if you don't have an understanding of that, you probably don't have a very accurate view of the world. Of course. Well, okay, but that's your view. I mean, no, I that's like the, that's I pretty, consider white privilege to be a conspiracy theory. Do you, you believe like in wait, wait, do you believe like you in generational wealth? Do you think that's a real you thing? You have talked. Wait, wait. All the stuff. I haven't talked anything. You've talked 95 percent of this conversation. So you now, talked all this stuff about not having. Oh, probably not 95 percent, but he. Ha I'm pretty sure he's out talked me at this point. I would be shocked if he hasn't. I'm talking a little bit more in this half, but Jesus fuck, I can barely respond to sometimes when he talks a lot i have think i've i've spoken more like in the in the previous 30 minutes than him though probably view that's not based on anything blaming problems on something white privilege is not simply about inter uh intergenerational wealth well explain white privilege let's hear what, what is white sure. privilege. so the idea of white privilege is that if you're white in the united states it seems like you have a set of unearned advantages that don't necessarily play for other people as a result of their skin. We'll describe what an earned advantage is. sure so an, an earned advantage might be that in any neighborhood at any point in time as a white man i don't feel uncomfortable asking a cop a question about something fuck so a really good example of an unearned um 
an unearned privilege that you would have with being white now that I know this um, would be that in Baltimore, um, if you were a worker at a union, a lot of the jobs that you had back in the segregation era were literally jobs that were better blue collar jobs than the black people. So you might get training to be like a riveter. You might get training to be, do like more high, um, more highly skilled blue collar work than a than a black person might be allowed to do. Now, after segregation ended, even once segregation ended, the only way that people could move into higher positions is if they had seniority working certain types of jobs. Well, guess what? Even after segregation ended, black people are still in shitty jobs. They're never moving up into the better jobs ever because they don't have seniority in those positions. They don't have the ability to bump workers or whatever in those positions. The people, the reason why those people had those positions was because they were white. Full stop. End of story. That's white privilege. That would be a, a really good, like, distilled example of it, like, in policy, in, 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 perf in like, it, like a performance of it right there. Fuck. Or when somebody looks at me, they're not going to assume instantly that I'm a dangerous individual or that I'm stupid. Or if I go to apply for a job, somebody won't refuse my job application just on the basis of my last name or first name, like being Jamal or my last name being, you know, Washington or some shit. Um, that, like these are forms of like unearned privilege that I have as a white guy. I don't have to worry about things like this in society ever. I've never in my life had to worry about being attacked because I'm white. Except I guess on Twitter when people really? tweet about like the Mayo side. <laughs> I can yeah. think of certain places you can go. Well, like you can think about that, but even in the polling data that you cited, the highest thing which had to do with jobs, only 19% of people responded favorably. So even in your own polling data, 81%. So you think it's okay that 19% of people like I never like, said that it was okay, but I'm saying that the majority of Americans agree with me that being white isn't generally something you've be you've been attacked for, as opposed to being black or Hispanic. I tried to redirect there a couple times, and I think I deflected both times pretty well and stand on point. I thought either of those could have tripped me up hard. Or Asian, which are other things that people get attacked for all the time. Like, what are like if we were to sit here and, 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 and think about if we, if we were to sit like, here, if we were to sit here and brainstorm all the negative things we can say about white people, like school shooter, I guess. Like, what what are all these that's negative? Not even true, actually. Okay, sure. Now, if we were to go to Hispanic people or black people or women or Asian people, like we could think of a million yes. horrible negative things to say about like these my types of people. You really do the same for white people. This well, idea is that, that white people's fault. I mean, that seems to be. <laughs> Is that white people's fault? Wait, that my argument is correct? Well, I mean, well, arguably I mean, that is white people's fault. Because we, yeah, the, the reason is that it was an institutional structure that existed by law in the United States up until about 1964, and arguably even further, depending on which specific laws you look at, like say the war on drugs, that institutionally reinforced those types of racial differentiators between black and white. Or I white am and white yeah, guys. Of course, that, that white people were uh, in a lot of places in charge of these policies that furthered white interests, as you would be so happy to admit. Why shouldn't the group of people further their interests? I don't think that a group. Ah, pivot, big pivot, and I should have called them out on it. Well, why shouldn't they be allowed to do it? So the initial argument was. This doesn't exist. And then I make my case, and he's like, okay, well, fine, it does exist. Why shouldn't it exist? <laughs> that is such a huge goalpost move. Oh, my God, and it happens right before my eyes, and I don't even see it. He went from, he went from white privilege isn't a real thing to, yeah, white privilege is a thing. Of course, why shouldn't we be allowed to privilege ourselves? Oh, my God, it's such a huge fucking goalpost shift group of people should further their interests at the expense of another group of people when you treat those people unfairly because I think that it leads to a whole bunch of discontent in society. I think it fucks a whole bunch of things up. We're a more globalized, connected society as much as we hate it, and it probably works a little bit better if we can integrate other people from other communities into our community to have the best and coolest fucking country we can. Because sometimes getting talent or information or ideas or knowledge or culture or whatever from other places and integrating it into our own is a really cool idea. That's why America why, why is it necessary to have like you know why is it necessary to have you know immigration and multiculturalism to have that? Can't we appreciate other cultures as they are and they have like trade and commerce and friendship with them? No. But also retaining our own? Not necessarily no. Okay, I don't well, know what like, about people I don't that know. want to do that though. Is that something to balance? Then they can, can go move to, to Norway or something or they can go move okay, to Norway. Is having big problems like this too. Norway is having a big problem with immigration and with with uh, cultural clashes involving people that are not compatible. I'm sure that if you try, sounds like white people. But fuck, if that's true, then that means that even white people there seem to be okay with like immigration and shit. So it seems like whatever your desire for some homogenous society or whatever doesn't seem to like exist almost anywhere. Like yeah, okay. I should have run And guess what? Back in America, in the that? listen, in the American founding colonies, when all the different types of white people came over, there was a ton of problems with people clashing as well. Okay. So much so that people scrambled together to write documents of propaganda to convince all the colonies to align under a single federal government, even when it was just white people. Like, these are people always have trouble getting along. That's always going to be a thing. Sure. Just so because why they're all then, white. Why then create more problems by, like, forced multicultural integration? Why we're not creating problems. problems. There are problems that are going to exist. If we were to take away all the Hispanic and all the African people, here's something that's shocking to a lot of Americans. If you go to Europe, they don't just have white people there. They actually, like, if you yeah, talk no, to. I, wait, wait, I yeah, sure, yeah, of course. It's not just white people there. They can actually see, oh, that dude's German, that dude's Russian, right? If we got rid of all the Hispanics and blacks, what's next? We get rid of all the people brown Hair? You get all the people with green eyes. We, no, like we can run down this thing. Not. Why sure. would that even be a logical? Why would you that even be a logical extension? No, that's, that's about as logical as saying somebody. That's about as logical saying somebody like me, who's half Cuban, or somebody like Fuentes, whose last name is Fuentes, counts as white in, in any white or, or white majority society. All I'm well, saying is that we're using these races as a proxy for other real problems that we both agree exist, and we're pretending that by getting rid of you know like some subset of or, or limiting the inflow of a certain type of people, that all these problems with societal fragmentation are just going to disappear. Which is I just think I'm all. steamrolling a lot of the conversation at this point. I think now I'm the one that's like laying out a lot. I don't know if I would consider this a gish gallop or not, but like I'm laying out a lot here, and I'm not giving him a chance to respond fully, completely. Uh, maybe. Well, I don't know. I'm just going to disappear. I'm saying it's it's one input to all of these problems, and there's no reason why we shouldn't do it. So, uh, like, why should a group of people want to have uh, immigration from people from another group and inherently be, like, that's something that's... It's just, strange, like, though, that even as I'm getting the chance to talk more, I'm still not catching and, like, identifying, like, the pivots of the goalposts moving in real time. It's a really big problem. 
should do inherently, and there's, it's wrong for them not I to mean, want like, it. I don't because be... if you don't, if you think that that's bad, then you actually have to disagree with the majority of mankind across the whole world in every other country where they actually prefer their own kind. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. And you can say, sure, in Europe, they don't consider themselves white. Yeah, that's not a big surprise to me that Europe Europeans generally see themselves as German or French or English or Polish or Czechoslovakian or whatever first. I understand that. That's fine. But in America, we don't have that. In America, what we are is white because we've all been mixed together. There's nothing wrong with that. But also, we're not the same as blacks. We're not the same as Mexicans. And there's no reason why we can't have a majority here and we can't work to preserve and defend that majority and expand it. I don't right like now, white people specifically are having problems that are accrue just to them. Uh, like, let suicide, them get despair, like opiate addiction. Why can't we understand that this could potentially be, uh, my explanation for this is that this is because white people generally don't see much of a future here. And this is actually not true for blacks. What you just, like, the, <laughs> and this is not fundamentally, like, why is like, it that the country that... What you just said, to to I haven't read that one lady's uh, paper in Lancet, but literally what you just said sounds like it agrees with her thesis. You're saying, what if white people are ODing on drugs because they don't see much of a future for white people in the US? Well, it sounds like that lady was saying if people stopped identifying as white, they'd stop killing themselves. Yeah, but that's, Do you but realize? That's, <laughs> I think that was a really, really good. I think rhetorically that was really effective. So that, you just laid out an entire argument for her on, paper. Why is the burden on them, though? Why, because why can't they just be who they want to be? Well, if it's causing them to all kill themselves on drugs, it sounds like it's not a very good identity to have. It wasn't before, though, right? You would argue that perhaps this nation was more strongly identified with whiteness. It's possible, earlier, but a lot of things have changed. It wasn't doing it before. A lot of things so have changed you, over time. You, you, know what, we... you, know what, you know what American Indians do? They sit on reservations and they drink fucking shampoo. Why? Because their culture's been destroyed. I don't want to be them. Okay, even if we assume that that's going to happen in the future, which we have no reason to assume it, if you, I have a reason. If to you assume really, it. if people you, like you, people but, with these attitudes, that want to deconstruct any kind of defense that we're going to make. It's not of our own of ourselves. Your whole ourselves argument, to... your whole argument assumes that minorities are going to be trashed in the future, and all of this is resting on the idea that minorities right now are being championed over the majority. Like your, your, I think your entire ideology is inherently contradictory. Well, if you really care about that, then why don't you push for more minority protections right now, so that when we become the minority, we'll be able to enjoy those protections, like why minorities just, do in the United States. Why don't I just push for staying the majority? What's, why can't I do that? Well, because it sounds like right now, according to you, the majority sucks because the minorities have all the rights in this country. So why don't we just? I think this is all like a good, a good, like a good smorgasbord of whole completely inconsistent points. Minorities have all the power. Majorities have no power. We're going to become a minority, but somehow when we become a minority, we're going to lose all the power, even though the minorities now gain the power and destroy the people that are in power. Like, all of this is like a just a catastrophe of, of inconsistent bullshit, I think. I'm a minority and go take all their shit. Like, oh, cool. Now I get to have, like, white lives matter. Nobody can bother me because I'm a minority. That might actually... Wait, smorgasbord. That's a real word. That's not racist, right? That That's like a feast of, like, smorgasbord of, like... A lunch and a super buffet for a variety of... Yeah, okay. I'm just making sure that's not like a racist thing. That I... <laughs> was a boomer Steve there. Yeah, strategy we'll have to employ in the future. Maybe, maybe the more reasonable route would be to acknowledge that there are a lot of problems that exist today due to a wide variety of reasons. I think the internet is the cause of a lot of them. And address, I yeah, I think the collapsing of communities. And this has been I happening all back to totally the 1900s. Yeah, the loss of unions, as much as I hate to say it. The Absolutely loss of the churches. Loss of yeah, that, as much as I hate to say it, because I'm an atheist, I hate unions. But churches and unions. Wait, why do you hate unions? Because you're an atheist. Uh, oh, no, I meant for the religion thing. I hate unions. Okay. I'm a big okay. I don't hate unions. But like these types of community organizations were integral to having societies of people that identify strongly. When you ask some people like where they were from in certain cities, like they would. Where, is it integral or integral? It's spelled the same. In math, we call them integrals. But in conversation, I don't think you would say this is integral to this. This is integral, right? the parish they wouldn't even tell you like yeah. the neighborhood sometimes yeah, yeah i think they don't have any of that I exactly that. And, but i think that focusing on rebuilding these types of institutions one it's possible because i don't have to get into some tangled history of talking about if i'm a white supremacist or white nationalist or whatever and two i think it would actually serve to address some of these problems rather than just pretending well if we were homogenous i think we'd be a lot happier because we looked but at japan actually, we, but if we look if we look if we look at some if we look at some homogenous countries like japan for instance that's like that could be the road that you're sending us down they have all the technology their people are insanely fucking healthy i think they have the longest lifespans in the world yeah. and they are fucking miserable they have like incels times a million these people live in their house until they're fucking 40 and these people are unironically marrying their fucking waifu pillows like this is the future in some ways that you seem like you want to point us down like, it doesn't seem like the homogeneity is helping them. Why not focus on, on addressing the problems like the collapse of communities or the loss of religion or institutions in I our country? I see these things as intertwined with each other. Well, clearly they're not because it hasn't always, it doesn't work that way in other countries all the time. They also have heated toilet seats everywhere, though. Have in Japan? Apparently. Yeah. They if do. I had that, I wouldn't leave the house. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, I just like, right. it feels like there are problems that we can talk about, but we get derailed on this, like, is it white? Do we need enough white people? I think rhetorically, I think these are, this is a really strong point of this conversation. I think this is really good. It's like, I feel like there are so many more important things we can talk about. Like, I know people, you know, that are fucked. And they're not even fucked because they're, like, poor. They just, like, they have no drive. They have no ambition to go out and do anything. They spend all their time playing games. They don't talk to people. They don't even know how to talk to people. And I don't think that living in an all-white community... The reason why I bring up games so much is because a lot of people Integral. over here... I don't necessarily think... <laughs> thank you. I don't necessarily think that games are, like, this horrible thing for you or whatever. But a lot of the, like, alt-right... Not alt-right, but this tradcon talking point usually centers around the degeneracy of playing video games all day. That's one of the reasons why I bring it up a lot is because I know that that point resonates a lot with that audience. I've never explained that before, so that might sound confusing why I keep bringing up games as an example of degeneracy or something but that's why i that's why i point to video games so much as like a bad thing or whatever it's gonna help some of these super depressed people like i mean i would i would see here's here's where i'm a little bit iffy because i would argue against that on some level i, I agree it wouldn't like solve everything but I, I also think that uh generally speaking you know whites do tend to prefer to socialize amongst each other just as other races prefer to socialize amongst each other i also feel like when people don't feel like they are actually in some sort of way under assault from other groups or 
or as if another group is a threat to them, then, then they actually are more likely to even be friends with people and, and share cultures and, and enjoyment of each other across those boundaries. And I think like the idea of living, like that we have to have everyone living on top of each other rather than able to live amongst themselves and express themselves as their own type of person. You know, in a way, like you're actually, you say you appreciate diversity, but your view of it actually destroys it because it's sort of like, and, and then we do have all these other problems of alienation and technology. And, and I would say on some level surveillance capitalism it comes into play here. The idea that, that like literally you can look, you can log onto your screen and because the, like many of these companies know and have algorithms to figure out what your desires are and understand mm -hmm. what you want. They can keep you glued to your screen in a way that is potentially even addictive, like mentally. Like, and this destructive is, to your personality, problems. yeah. These are problems. I agree, totally. I would love to talk about that too. But I, I also see other problems where there's a lot of anti-whiteness and there's an inability of white people to push back on certain means like, like white privilege, like the fact that, you know, why shouldn't we be able to enjoy being a majority and crafting a culture for ourselves? That is something that seems to be a privilege that groups have all around the world and, and particularly whites have to be united. And now, you know, you said go to Norway, go to Sweden, go to this, there. they're having exactly the same kind of problems there where, where you know, and, and I, I think that if people, you know, if you were to go to one of those countries, say you're going to Sweden, like 1990, mm -hmm. you would have seen like the happiest country in the world. Under what obligation are they to then open the door? Why should they? Well, I don't want to talk about Sweden. I don't think, I'm, I'm I don't necessarily think any country. General. I don't think any country has an obligation to. But I mean, like, okay. there's a lot of benefits that we gain by integrating well, other cultures well, into our own. I, like, no offense, but have you ever had the food in Sweden? Holy shit, it's fucking horrible. Have you ever had the food in? I'm gonna piss a lot of people right now, but in the United Kingdom, like, say for their yeah. breakfast, food it's in pretty the United fucking Kingdom sucks. Sure, but uh, like, but if you compare like the food, the food that we food, have, I, so I live in LA, in right? Like, how good is the food though? Well, I mean, if I mean, if I go to like a really good Indian place, a really good Chinese place, a really good Mexican place, like I can find a lot of sick fucking food in the United States. Some of America's most important cultural contributions in the world, say musically, has come have come from African Americans. Things like jazz, things like hip hop, like these are like the dominant forms of culture we've exported the entire world, and even things that we get out of Japan, like cowboy bebop exists without african-american jazz music i don't actually know you know like there's a ton but of that advantages didn't require blacks living in japan it, it, no but it probably did for them to live in america to create that music sure. right i mean like, i don't actually have a big problem with black well sure but i'm saying that, like forever, when you like, sure when really. you talk they're about like be here they're, they're here whatever like white, well, in fact i would actually argue that prior to what you think is this great progression progression of the civil rights movement blacks and whites got along better in this country um and I you mean, go, oh they were oppressed blah, blah, blah. but again like you know D Fine. Depending on what we're talking about. But again, I also well, don't like to center my argument on what's good for blacks because that's done in literally sure, everything. But I don't, I don't even like care necessarily. I don't even care necessarily like what's good for blacks. Okay, I'm not a black person, right? Technically, like what's oh, good for blacks. Okay, yeah, so exactly. Glad we got that out of the way, right? <laughs> However, there have been a ton of ways. Somebody, sure. Yeah. Well, as somebody that's enjoyed, you know, a, a lot of different types of music, like a lot of that came. Yeah, I used to listen to rap music all the time, man. Like, it's not just rap music. Like jazz has been influential across the time. Do you ever listen to prog metal? Do you listen to any of those bands coming to Sweden? Like, do you listen to like? Have you ever listened to like Beatles? Or have you ever listened to like Animals as Leaders? Psychedelic rock. Yeah, sure. Like a lot of these things, like you know, trace the roots back to like early rock. What do you think I'm saying? Like, what you're saying? No, I'm not saying. Genocide I don't argue for that. I, you're not arguing for that, but you're, you're you're trying to make this assumption that if we were to hardcore segregate all these cultures off in their own little corners, that the same type of cultural intermingling would still happen. It absolutely wouldn't. Like no, no way. Well, the same type, but maybe a different, maybe a better type would happen. It's possible. That's a counterfactual that neither of us could support, but that doesn't seem to be the well, case. That's right, though, because we know what's happening now. Let's try something different. I mean, how much culture do you feel like we get from like some, you know, like from? I don't know. We can name like random African or South American countries that neither of us know anything about. It seems like they probably don't. Do. I'm pretty sure that having people like in your actual country to actually contribute to the culture, like being there, probably makes a big difference rather than having it happen overseas. Like that type of like cultural like inflow and outflow isn't going to happen. Anime is pretty big in the U.S. It's one of the biggest cultural influences there is, and not that many Japanese people in the U.S. Sure, but a lot of that is because we have like a lot of like back and forth in terms of like our like entertainment and media, right? Like we import a lot of like culture from Japan literally directly. Exactly. That's his argument, though. I now, didn't pick up on he so. He should have countered me there. What he's trying to say is that, like, well, we can still have the same cultural intermingling without having the actual people living here. I don't think that's true. Or it might happen to some extent, but it's going to be far lesser in degree. But he, but that was the argument that he was making. I didn't one hundred percent understand that. But yeah, let me interject and uh, ask you, Mike. And I, I mean, it's open to Destiny as well. I was going to get it in like twenty minutes ago, but I just let you guys go. Um, Mike, what are your thoughts on uh, democracy as a form of governance uh, as it applies to the United States? But I mean, you can make it in general too if you like. Sure. I mean, I actually. Um... I, in general, am pro-democracy, and I think that, you know, there's a certain people on the right that have views that I don't entirely agree with, some, some like what I call actually reactionaries, Destiny might even agree, where they have an idea of, like, uh, you know, the rich or the powerful know better, and they, you know, they have a view that should be imposed over, like, the slobbering masses that don't know what the hell they're talking about. I don't, I don't go for that. In fact, I would argue, and particularly with what I'm most familiar with, like, the history of the United States, I would say the positions that would be, would have been the majority positions are things that I would generally have supported going back for a fairly long time, certain issues, you know, depending... But um, these are thwarted, actually, by elites. So I would actually say the, what we have as a system in the United States is uh, actually set up to thwart the interests of the people. The fact that we have this, this uh, you know, three branches of government and then one branch supersedes the other and this way or that. And in fact, the, the executive... This was a nightmare. Um, this lack of understanding of how the government works. I should have capitalized on his misunderstanding here, too, to push even harder on his grand conspiracies. Like you're telling me that you have this so, this super good understanding of how Jewish people are controlling every echelon of society, and you don't even really know how like the basic structure that you would learn in grade school of how the government works. I should have pushed really hard on this. The branch is really the weakest, and the judicial, I would argue, is the strongest because ultimately they get the final say, and that's that's very anti-democratic because there's multiple layers of decision making between the people and who those final decision making people judges are, 
So I think I'm, I'm generally for democracy. And, and in instances when we've had dem direct democracy, I can think of certain decisions in California, like the vote on Prop 8, like the vote on whether or not to give illegal immigrants driver's license, et cetera. The people came out and voted for the position I would support. And then that was thwarted through the use of, you know, elite shenanigans using courts and things like that. So uh, just like I would say the Immigration Act of 1965, this is not something the people given a direct democratic vote would have voted for. They would have said no. And they didn't get input on this. And I would say generally speaking. I, I've done the research on that. I, I know enough about that that I should have been pushing back on, on this, on letting him use heart seller so much. A lot of the things that Destiny favors socially, uh, in terms of you know, but, certain, certainly his cultural views, certainly his racial and, and diversity views, these are things people would not choose and have to be imposed on people undemocratically through the use of, of some kind of shenanigans. Well, but let me I ask think, you this. Let me ask you this. Assuming the demographic uh, shift continues as it's projected um, and there's a permanent you know, left-wing majority uh, due to whatever, if you want to attribute it to demographics or whatever, if the trend continues um, and this democracy just busts down everything you want and completely dominates you, uh, would you still be in favor of democracy? Like, uh, obviously not, because I would say the interests, my group interests, my, my interest in my group interest and in the interests of the people that have decided to be part of my group. Well, we in chat we or else for, you die. Or politically, these supersede any one particular system. So I would say if, if in fact it comes to be a point where we just get downvoted on everything because there's just not enough of us, then I don't care. Then I just, this system is illegitimate. I don't Wait. have to be a okay. part of it. Wait, okay. So, okay, let me respond a couple things. So first of all, so you're not in favor of, in, at all of democracy. You can't say like, I'm in favor of democracy as long as everybody's voting how I want them to vote. Well, sure, that's not a favor. No, that's because like, that's not democracy. That's <laughs> literally not, that's not democracy. I like democracy if I win. Who, okay. who doesn't? So you're not that's in favor of democracy. That's a really that's stupid, like, that was such a stupid point for him to bring up. That was a really easy gotcha. I can't believe he actually unironically said this. This was so dumb. Legion to like democracy either. No, I like it because I think it works right. Wait, 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 okay, hold on, okay, you had your 15 minutes, yeah, okay. So you're not in favor of democracy, you know, you only like it when you get your way, that's fine. Now, I'm not necessarily any different. I think democracy sucks for a lot of reasons too, because people are dumb as fuck. Um, unlike you though, I think the problem with democracy is oftentimes people's interests are actually represented in the government, which I think is a big fucking problem, I think people are fucking stupid. Which you even agree to some extent, because you would probably say most white people are stupid to, to, for voting themselves out of power or whatever. Um, we made a comment earlier, it was just kind of wrong, where you say like the judicial branch gets the final say. Um, that's a really weird way to look at law. You know, like, does the judicial branch get the final say? I mean, it gets the final say in, in whether or not something is constitutional, except Congress has the power to change the Constitution, and the judicial branch gets its nominees from the presidential branch. So it's really weird to say the judicial branch overrules the other three when the president that's voted on by the people literally nominates judicial, uh, uh, Supreme Court justices, yeah, and then when Congress can literally say, by the way, Supreme Court, here's a new amendment. So that's a really weird thing to say the judicial branch gets the final say and that's broken. Um, also, I don't want to get into Hart Seller too much. I mean, we can go there, but like the idea that like Hart Seller didn't represent the will of the people, this has never been demonstrated. Well, I keep saying I don't want to get into this too much, but these are areas that like I know so much information about. I don't know why i think i'm trying too hard to come across as non-combative i think we should have gotten into heart seller a lot like heart seller was the first time that as america we started to place limits on the amount of immigration coming from the south um the effects of heart seller and some of the provisions that we put in, people just had no idea that it was going to result in so much immigration from the South. Um, at the time, we were even looking for workers to come from the South because we needed to fill out more jobs in our economy. Uh, like, I, I, I don't, I, sh I should, I should have been more combative on on heart seller. Should it ever? And also, Harcelo was literally the first time we even imposed immigration caps on people coming from, from south of the border. So to say that like that was the reason why you know all these Mexicans came in and shit um, is, is very strange. When that was the first time we even actually like imposed strict caps on people coming from south of the border anyway. Um, yeah, that's for those three things. All right. Well, I would just say that the Supreme Court is the final decision-making body of the country. I mean, would you disagree with that? And as you said, it's, it's, final decision it's a final decision-making body in terms of the in terms of the Constitution. But then, it's not. I mean, they they get all kinds of weird, like the idea that like abortion is a constitutional right. I mean, that's come on. Let's be honest. Now, wait, wait we but we can change say, that like, using the using the legislative branch. So they're not the right. final say. Yeah, but we again, the legislative branch is the look. Sure, I guess if we want to like the judicial branch is the final say on the Constitution, literally. Congress can change the Constitution. You're literally wrong. <laughs> like, that's actually 100% incorrect. Like, we can literally pass amendments through Congress, which literally changes the literal Constitution in a very literal manner that literally makes it so that the Supreme Court is not the literal final say. Like, that was so dumb. I mean, this is not something I'm particularly invested in, in like going down the road of, but I would just say the judicial branch gets the final say on a lot of issues and they can twist. And the judicial the branch gets the, they get the final say on legal issues the, because it's our highest court, of course. Yeah, but the, but yes. the legislative branch, that's their job. The legislative branch gets the final say on legislation and the presidential branch is a literal check on the judicial branch. A lot of people wanted a more conservative court. That's why Trump won. Now we have a more conservative court. Like, that's, it's literally not them getting a final say. Like, <laughs> All right, let me. Uh, oh, uh, I think that looked uh, really bad here. by him. Uh, now, Mike, I guess I'll well, have another question for you, but let, let me give Destiny a question. I guess since I just asked uh, Mike a question, uh, would you say that capitalism is the best economic system, Destiny? If so, why? If not, what would you replace it with? If you could, what changes, if any, do you think should be made to our financial system? I think capitalism is the best system that we have for economics, but I, I think that we have to pay attention to more than just economics when we look at like how we allocate resources in society. Um, so like there are some things that capitalism does really well, like allocating capital to projects, but there are some things that capitalism doesn't do well. If allocating capital more, efficient, more efficiently to different projects leaves whole communities of people fucking destitute, um, obviously that's a huge fucking problem. So like I, I'm a big proponent of capitalism because I think it works better than say central planning, like a, like a socialist alternative might offer, or to any kind of weird anarcho-communist uh, or anarcho-libertarian <laughs> system. Like I'm not in favor of that shit because I don't oh, think I see any of that you. working. Um, but I think it's important to keep 
keep in mind at the end of the Thanks. day that just because something is like an economic advantage that doesn't necessarily translate into an advantage for society just watching gdp go up if you know 95 percent of those gains go to you know a certain elite in society um probably isn't a good thing and that right. like watching the destruction wholesale of i have to be really careful when i say this i should never i should never say like well, just because 90 percent of city of um, of gdp gains go to a certain elite in society i shouldn't say elite there because that sounds like a dog whistle whistle for jews when i'm debating an actual nazi i should be really careful about that wowie Action across communities in the United States, having these communities be fucking destroyed just so, you know, somebody in California can buy a car, you know, for 20% cheaper probably isn't a good thing for the health of the country. So while I agree that capitalism is really good at, at producing positive economic outcomes, it's the responsibility of government to take those economic outcomes and channel them in more positive ways so that we're helping and uplifting the entire country and not just the few segments that can benefit from a more globalized world. Uh, go ahead, Mike. You can follow up on that too if you want. Yeah, I actually agree with with most of that. I mean, in, in principle, almost uh, the entirety of it. Now I'm sure Destiny and I would disagree on on the kinds of things we would like. Uh, the government to you know channel its energy of controlling capital i can't tell if this looks really good for me really good for mike i think it looks really i think that if i give my entire spiel on like problems related to society another and, while we please and all mike can say is like well yeah i think i agree with all of that i feel like that's a strong point for me i feel like it looks good for me um that's the feeling that i got um, and i get that feeling because a lot of people after my debate with mike were complaining saying that mike cucked out too much and was agreeing too much with destiny um yeah especially because you wouldn't expect to hear that when Mike Enoch is a literal Nazi and I'm a, and I'm like an SJW cuck lord or whatever some shit, you probably wouldn't expect to hear that in that conversation. My, my major beef with capitalism is, is possibly a little bit a little bit different than, than destiny. So um, something can and I'll give an example as, as what, what my problem is um, that, that maybe is something people don't think about is that capitalism, not just in terms of it allocates wealth possibly unevenly or it creates bad social outcomes that like jobs and businesses will leave certain areas if a certain other area is cheaper labor there. So they move. And I would definitely say it's absolutely the responsibility of the government to prevent that sort of thing. Like, no, guess what, buddy? You can't leave. And if prices go up, like we'll just have to suck it up. And, you know, then maybe we cut immigration to raise wages. That's an idea. You know, it's always, always works. But I would say this. I don't like the cultural power that capitalists have. I don't like the fact that, for example, um, Silicon Valley is like, I would I would argue, generally speaking, the cultural values of the big corporate giant heads of Silicon Valley. We can even name them, like Larry Page, Sergey Brin, Tim Cook. Uh, He's naming Jews here. I know. I don't know if they're Jewish or not, but I'm like, no, no. These guys are probably all Jewish, huh? Uh, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, these people, I would say their cultural values, uh, Sheryl Sandberg, these, the cultural values people do not line up with the uh, majority of the country, and yet they have the ability through their ownership of capital to impose things. And I'm not just talking about because- I needed to push back again. He's going back to that very same empirical claim that like, oh, well, you know, their values don't line up with the country's where, show that. You have, you've still never demonstrated this huge desire America has to be like some pure white, like fucking bullshit. Like you, you've never demonstrated that. Yeah, I keep letting him get away with that. They have their products that they've created that you can choose to use or not use or whatever. What I'm saying is like in uh, Virginia, you know, for a very long time, in Virginia, and really for the white people in Virginia, certainly, gun rights are very important, like their right to carry and bear arms. And in fact, the governor of Virginia is now talking about with the legislature, you know, limiting those rights because they need to do that to attract investment. So I don't like the, the fact that these people, that simply because they sold something and made a lot of money that they get to now have like, like dictate culture in any way. And I would say that, hey, if the state of Virginia needs investment, then we should have a government body to correct that rather than just like, oh, we now have to like change the culture and the, the, our norms and our way of life in order to attract investment here. Like, I, I don't like that at all. And I think that the, the fact that the generally mm. speaking wealthy elites have cultural views that are actually just out there. I have a really good response to this. And then he kind of diffuses it with some bullshit, but I have to look into it more too. And, and it doesn't have to be a racial thing. Even, even blacks and, and a lot of Mexicans agree with me. Just out there cultural views that are just Wait, like, so what, far gone. what do you mean by out there cultural views? What, what kind of out oh, there? very pro homosexual, pro trans, this kind of like very weird and out there stuff that most people are extremely uncomfortable with and don't like. And, and Really don't want anything to do with and uh you know they, wait, so they if we were to pull like how, their capital wait, wait, if we were to pull what most americans feel about like homosexuality like you understand that the groups that would align with you hardest on that wouldn't be white people it would be hispanics and blacks okay so it Good seems plan. like if, 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 if like cultural problems like degeneracy is something that you want to push back against a lot it seems like importing more hispanic or black people would actually help you more than hurt you there I mean, I, again, I, I don't know anything about that. I would have to look at that. But. Oh, that's a good one. I should have had an exact fucking poll. He knows I'm fucking right on that too. 100% he knows I'm right on that. I mean, we can bring up any. I hate to make, make, make a Count Dankula argument, but if you bring up any YouTube video of like an LGBT march, it's not full of Hispanic yeah, and black people, it's full of white kids. Like, I mean, you'd also be seeing, you'd be seeing white people of a particular class and probably coming from particular parts of the country. I don't, I don't know that. I, I mean, again, I would actually dispute the fact that that is what most white people think, and I don't care mm. because I think that white people of a particular class coming from a particular part of the country, yes, because values don't fall on race lines in the United States. Typically, they fall on other lines like geography or class or whatever. Generally, sometimes they can be on race lines, but more likely it's in, in on other areas. White people that align with that kind of culture, I don't like them very much. Mm -hmm. I don't really want to do them. I agree, yeah, white because people. white people aren't like a monolithic people. Sure, I agree. No, 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 of course not. But the, but why can't? But these are arguments that we should be having without having to, you know. You know now, first, 
Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Mm. Speaking of white people, you mentioned this. The that was really good. Meme earlier, okay. and I actually did have this question, and I figured that now. Oh, wait, can I respond? What points is it that he believes that makes him a Nazi? I am just bad at understanding stuff. Uh, I mean, like, he dog was He basically, he is... He doesn't really believe that the Holocaust happened the way that they say it do. It's, um, I don't know if he believes it's totally fake or he just tries to change the numbers a lot. He believes that Jews are basically um, in charge of, like, all of society. That, like, they're trying to, like, do some massive um, conspiracy to, like, destroy whites or whatever. Um, <clears throat> and then he wants to create, really? like, a majority white state. I mean, I think all of these are, like, Nazi, neo-Nazi talking points, right? Like, third position. Oh, yeah, he advocates for a third position, which is literally fucking Nazi Nazism, yeah. Quick, does answer that before you ask sure, if you'd like, yeah, I'm going to ask you right it. after that. Yeah, but right after ahead. that, that's fine. Um, in terms of not liking the cultural power the capitalists have, um, I 100% agree with that. However, it's up to every individual community to decide, you know, what the trade-off is that they want when it comes to letting capitalists exert power over their culture. So, for instance, you mentioned Virginia. The government they have said, the ability to do that? Yeah, absolutely. I would dispute that. Okay, well, we just had a real-life example of this happen in New York when AOC was clapping because they managed to turn away a massive investment that Amazon would have made in one of their cities and setting up huge headquarters. Now, even though there was a lot of potential economic prosperity there for the people that a capitalist like me might jerk off, the people in that city were so adamantly against it that they were actually able to turn that away. And you do see that happen across city sometimes, where they say, hey, you know what? We're not going to cook out and go to the bottom of the barrel with, like, tax breaks for you guys. I've seen this happen in my own city in Omaha. It's happened in St. Louis. Happened this was a really good... Um, it seems there's, like, a high-pitched quiet... Yeah, I don't know. Somebody's vacuuming or something. I want to show that is, but this is a Kansas good city, where example. some of these cities will say, like, "Hey, we're not going to absolutely slash our tax rates to bring you in." And the people say, "You know, we might get a little bit more economic prosperity here, but we're going to reject that and we're going to turn you away." And you can go to some other place. It's going to crawl down on their knees for you, or whatever. It does I happen around the United States. Speaking that those types of decisions happen in places like New York City or cities where where uh, you get actually more. And these are these are these are and, and these are actually sort of generally speaking more affluent people that are that have more. <sighs> um. Hey, buddy, it's on you to say yesterday. Debating people is never going to convince people to change their views. You have to be nice to people and work on them over time, and they will change if you slowly impose your views by that outright debating to convert people on the fence. Um, there are elements of truth to that, uh, but the reason why Asana is saying that is because now that he has those people as a friend group, that's why he's not debating them. It doesn't have anything to do about politics. Like, he might use that as an excuse. Um, I actually called this out a long time ago on a Raj Royale, where I remember that when I went on, I don't know if you remember, but I'm pretty sure before. I'm pretty sure before TwitchCon EU, Hassan was calling out like a lot of other like people like Slicker and shit for doing like hateful bad stuff. But after they met in person, they were chill. And I think I even said on one of the rails is like, listen, here's what happens. Every time you meet people in real life, you can't really hate them anymore because most people don't have the conviction to call out people that they have personal relationships with. I called that out. I said it and it has never happened. Right. And then it's the same thing, like in terms of like what's going on now, like if you have friendships and communities, you're not going to call them out on shit they do that's stupid or wrong because you don't want to damage those friendships. That's it. There's not some greater political strategy or whatever. That's bullshit. You you can pretend there is. You can try to, like, post hoc rationalize it. You know, like, go back and find a reason why. But the reality is that you just don't want to be mean to your friends. That's that's it. Or ability to express themselves. Where no. Or, Affluent or, people would be massively or, in favor of... Are there better arguments for diversity than food slash music slash culture? The average alt writer would gladly trade all of the good or people. People say that, but I don't believe that. Like, food, culture, and... Or, like, food and music on their own are, like, how many different times in a day do you interact with food? How many different times in a day do you interact with music like or, or, or entertainment or media like these are things that kind of like define our lives on a day-to-day -day basis it's like having songs films foods that you like like these are really important things um like Eric linked me this video that i thought was really funny you know people talk about like oh well i don't care about food black swan says aoc is out here telling us to stop eating burgers they want us to all be demasculated herbivores in a pen when I hear people tell us not to eat meat, I want to ask what's wrong. Lip Tart, you going to cry? Piss your pants, maybe? Maybe shit? Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's true. That's a thing. I mean, it, this isn't even a meme or anything, but look, if you don't eat meat, you become gay. It's just true. You have to eat meat to be healthy. You have to be, particularly for men, but for women also, you have to eat meat to be a healthy person. Anybody will tell you this. Even the most hardcore vegans, even vegetarians, you have to like, eat. People want to eat. They can, Let them eat rice. Let them eat the crickets. Let them eat the mealworms. Let them eat the dung for all we care. Let them eat the dirt. Let them eat dirt cookies like in Haiti. But they will try to convince you that you have to give up your diet because we're not going to be able to feed everybody and all this other stuff. Look, Mexicans want to come here, whatever. They want to push that shit in Africa. Let them. But we are going to eat McDonald's. That's the one good thing about the market, I think, is that the market will not stop supplying us with meat as long as people are willing to pay for it. So we can't give it up. Do not give in to the bug cult. And you see it all the time. People don't believe me. I get emails from people that are like, oh, Nick, you don't know what you're talking about. There's enough. Like, I, like, I don't know. Like, people can pretend at the end of the day that they don't actually care about, like, any, like, entertainment media. But, like, come on, dude. You're going to tell me that music has no impact on your life? Like, what the fuck? Like, a lot of people define, like, parts of their childhood, like, with associations with certain songs. Like, all of us could turn on, like, a fucking Nirvana song or a Linkin Park song or a Justin Bieber song. I don't know how old some of you fuckers are. And be like, oh, shit. Like, I remember, like, when I heard the song, this was, like, when I got my first kiss. Or this is when I was in high school. This is my first prom. This is when I was hanging out with my friends playing blah 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 or we do it with like video games we play or we do it with like fucking films we watch like you're gonna sit here and pretend that like 
none of that matters to you, fuck out of here, okay? Like, every fucking Nazi is out there, like, exclusively listening to fucking Bach and Haydn and Beethoven and Tchaikovsky. Like, get fuck out of here. Come on. Let, like, show me your Spotify playlist. Like, there's not going to be a whole bunch of fucking classical composers from the 1800s on there. Fuck out of here. Have Amazon. Don't, don't have this ability if, if we were talking only affluent people in New York, they would be 100 percent in favor of any Amazon facility moving. I, we know serious. That. I lived in New York for 20 years, and I can tell you for sure the people that gave a fuck about the idea of an Amazon coming in to the city were all rich fucks. Wait, why? It's not going to affect them one way or another. It's not like it's going to make their life demonstrably worse. It's going to hurt because people. It's, it's, like, it's, it's ride the subway. It's, it's like, like, I don't know, like the exact fucking area of New York where this fucking building was going to be um, built. I I let myself get lost in the weeds here because he makes a he makes like a vague claim, and I don't know if it's true or not. Kind of like what he did earlier with the like, well, how many of those white kids that got rejected from Harvard or accepted into Harvard because of the privilege were Jewish? Like I don't fucking know. Um, I sh I shouldn't have let him get into the weeds here. His original argument was that corporate interests always rule out over non corporate interests, and I have a, an example of corporate interests losing out in New York, and now he's saying, well, that's just because it was other rich. I, like fuck, I shouldn't have like. I'm pretty like sure he's 100 percent making this up here. Yeah, it feels like it, but I I just I don't know exactly. So. I'm telling you, first of all, A, the question of will it make life better or not, I mean, that's, you could argue that one way or the other, I'm not right, but I'm telling you is the people that were opposing that kind of stuff, generally speaking, were like, you do not see like poor blacks and Hispanics at these, at these town or these communities. You saw a ton where, of where blacks people... and Hispanics rising up. Of course, that was one of the whole arguments about like some of AOC's areas up there is that it's a democratic AOC trip to Hispanic people. AOC was voted people. in by the freaking white people of Queens. I thought like, the whole, I thought the whole white nationalist argument was the idea that like AOC only won her district because of the massive demographic shift. No, that's not true. AOC won there. because of hipsters. You know how many? You know how many people voted for AOC in the primary? I don't know how many exactly. Sixteen thousand. Okay. Out of how many? That's not very many people given her district. How many and people live in her district? White the people that worked for her were white hipsters. How she many live in her district? Because of white hipsters. Now, as soon as you win as the primary as a Democrat right. in that district, you've won. Okay. Right. But she did not win. And if you looked at her, look, I you you could you could say I'm just lying or whatever. But I lived in New York when I literally lived in New York City twenty years of my life. I know the culture there very very well, probably more than anywhere else on earth. I know New York City culture. And that was absolutely shit lib white hipsters that were the. So you're telling me the majority of people in that area wanted it there, but like it was the elitists that came out and like moved against. Women. I don't know whether the majority of people wanted it or not. What I'm saying is the elitists are the ones that prevented it from coming. I think the majority of people had no fucking idea what was going on one way or the other. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't disagree that it feels like we've lost like a lot of our regional political influence, and that um, when we move to a more like federal level of looking at things, companies like Google or Facebook do wield a disproportionate amount of power. Um, it okay. seems like um. One of the things that we had in America that made us relatively exceptional compared to other parts of the world was we had like very localized governments. Um, in a lot of cities, like the parish was very important. Um, mm -hmm. Unions and union meetings were really mm -hmm. important. And e even your neighborhood, like your block was like really fucking important. There were a lot of people that would get together and you would you would read about these people that were like, you know, at the town hall meeting, you know, everybody was there, people were talking, people were, like everybody was like very much bought into their local political scene. That seems mm -hmm. to have been completely eroded and deleted right now in, right. in America. Do you life. think that like mm -hmm. ethnicity or race even is totally relevant to that? Yeah, I don't think it's very relevant at all. I, I think that like I just disagree with that. That's fine. I mean, we can say that if you want. Um, but I mean, like I can find areas that are culturally homogenous, like Japan, that have the exact same fucking problems that we do today. Um, it's not unique to non-homogenous areas. And even areas of very homogenous white people can still feel very disconnected from society. Yes, um, of course they can. Sure. Yeah, I'm like, not saying that. I'm not saying this is going to fuck. And now my example would be like, well, actually, if you look at like working class politics in different types of cities growing up. So I could say like Baltimore, not growing up, like in the 50s, 60s, 70s, like sometimes people would draw like lines based on whether or not they lived in the suburbs, whether or not they lived in the city, um, what type of jobs they wanted to support, blue collar versus white collar. That These are historically a lot of the fights that we had, you know, post New Deal America, you know, in the 60s, 70s, um, where, where people were fighting on, on class lines and on blue collar versus like some suburbanites and shit that these didn't always fall on race lines and and to say that white people were a united voter block is absolutely not true um you know like the the haughty elite white liberal you know versus the um versus the suburban uh the, the blue collar rights or whatever you know the reagan democrats like the the it's just not true it's just it's a historical going to solve all problems sure i just think it will solve some problems i think not even this i think it will make i think this is something I see a very bad future for whites in this country, given immigration rates and given cultural, social attitudes and economic prospects. And this is already being reflected in health problems that are specifically affecting whites. And I've chosen to make my political advocacy about talking about those things. And I've, I, I'm not going to deny I've suffered a lot for it. I've gotten, I don't even need to go. I'm not going to give you a soft story. I guess like, yeah, I mean, like, the I, point is, I, like, I, this is what I'm about. And I don't think that the fact that maybe not all white people agree with me, that to me, who cares? So what? Like, this is my position. This is what I'm advocating for. I guess, like, it's kind of funny that we're having this argument because, like, the black community has the same argument a lot, too. Like, do we blame white people for our problems or do we try to, like, bring our own families up and, you know, have our own communities instead of waiting well, for white well, people, right? And, well, sure. But, like, it seems like sometimes the messaging feels, like, so oriented towards picking out, like, some demon to attack rather than trying to give people, like, an idea of, like, hey, Maybe it would be a good idea to log off the computer and go outside and talk to your friends. Or maybe it would be a good idea to, like, literally block Reddit on your phone. That, like, there are things that we can find, like, to help people get out and be a part of their community and social. Hey, like, hey, I totally agree yeah. with you. In, in fact, fact, people have coalesced around my website. Sure. And they've built regional clubs and groups of fans that do this. They go hiking, they go rucking, they go camping, they go shooting. Sure. They I think go it would fishing, be cool. I think we can do that. A lot, of these guys, yeah. a lot of these guys were total shut ins. And I, yeah, and I'm sure it has been. But I think we could do that without the racial aspect. Well, like, both why, of us why, here. What's wrong with doing it based on Because both of us here. these guys' lives better. No, but anything. Sure. Giving anybody a group to belong to, it could be fucking 
ISIS even makes people's lives better. Of course, because they have a purpose and they're driven to, to do these things. But the problem is yeah, that we're not ISIS, okay? Like we're not. I'm not saying you're ISIS. I'm saying just because you've given people a purpose in life doesn't mean that everything you do is good, right? There are things. Wait. Meme distorts AOC's elections vote count. Misleading meme states that a representative of Alexandria Ocasio Cortez received about sixteen thousand votes while running for office in twenty eighteen. She won her district. She won her seat with one hundred ten thousand three hundred. 110,318 votes in the general election. She received 16,898 votes in the district's Democratic primary. Oh, okay. Well, that's what he was saying, that if you win the primary, you win the election or whatever, basically. But so you can improve. And I think that everybody in probably— You can say about anything. You say about the church. You can say about unions. You can say about bowling clubs. Sure, but if we're so talking what? about, like, constructing something, why wouldn't we make something that's starting off on, like, a good foot rather than, like, bringing, like, racial good foot, exclusion, good like, right into standards. the— What? That's by your standards. By my standards, this is a good foot. I guess if you just want all white people, sure. But like, I, I, I the guess people like, that join our groups do. Sure. Well, after listening to you enough, they might. I just think that um, I would be worried that people would think that just by appealing to like these, you know, these white demographics that you're going to fix like any problem that exists in a person's life. Well, that's just not true. Like you can get a lot of the messaging about like having a stronger presence in your community, about being more active with your family and friends. You don't need it. Nothing has to do anything with white people, you know, in order okay, to sell I mean, those messages. But do you and you're also that excluding like Latino also... people that organize along those bases. Do you say that to blacks? And again, you're going to say, well, they've got historical oppression. They've got particular issues. Or I'm just saying. The idea no, that that actually, I say, thing. you know what? I say on my stream all the fucking time, fuck defining yourself based on your oppressive history. I don't think that's necessarily a good thing to do. I don't think that all Latinos and blacks should make their entire lives about like oppression by white people. Do now, you ever debate them on this issue? Sure. I, yeah, I, you don't know anything about my history. And that's okay. No, I'm I, actually, I'm I, literally I literally just came off like a three month bender on debating on whether or not white people could say the N word where I took the affirmative in that. So, yes, I have debated about this a lot, okay? I, this is definitely something that I do. But, like, we can. No, I understand. I understand. I'm not trying to say you I don't expect you to follow everything on me, just as I follow everything on you. What I'm saying is that, like, we can sell all of this positive messaging that people need to find purpose and like people need to do things, and we don't have to include any racial aspect into it. Because as soon as you start making it racial, you're showing people like enemies where they don't necessarily exist and worse you're cutting off people from meeting a lot of potentially really fucking cool people i've met a lot of people that are super awesome that are black that are mexican that are jewish that i would have never met had i belonged to some group that told me the only way i can be a part of this group is if i exclude all non-white people okay i mean that's again i could have made it personal and said like you literally married somebody that would have been excluded on your criteria like you must have loved your wife at some point like you would have never met her in your world that's a little personal but I'm not arguing about this. We're now just arguing about, like, do you prefer to be a part of, like, a white community or not? And I can't, certainly, I don't expect every white person will prefer that. I think a lot of them will. And uh, that's certainly what I prefer and what the people that listen to, to me prefer. And I think the fact that that is what we prefer, and there's a good number of white people that do, the fact that there is a system in this country that is set up to specifically outlaw that, or not, out, not outlaw, I shouldn't say. Well, out, depending, actually, depending. Certainly, uh, you know, attempting to do something in, real, in terms of real estate or things like that, like creating communities that are, that, are, that are sort of homogeneous in that way, that's outlawed. But in terms of, like, clubs and things like whatever, this is the culture and the communities that, that we have have chosen and we have decided to be like this and you know sure there's a lot of people that think it's not valid. a lot of white people that think it's not valid but again that's not really up to them what we're gonna do right. well i guess like Let one of the cool things oh i just there's a final thing this is one of the cool things. if final, we ever get to the yeah the final if we ever get to the what does it mean to be an american thing i think one of the cool <laughs> things about being americans is that we can accept a lot of different types of people that have a lot of different types of ideas if you want to exist as a minority group of white people that only make friends with other white people or whatever yeah you've got the right to do that i guess i think it's really stupid i think a lot of those people are missing out on meeting a lot of potentially cool people but if you really want to you can do that you've already got the power to do it apparently it sounds like you've already made clubs you've already made groups you've got podcasts like i guess that's your right to do it and you already have the ability to do it all right, here we go. Uh, would you? This is to Mike, by the way. Uh, would you consider Jewish people? To he be should have countered that and said, "Yeah, we have the right to do it, but we're gonna get like fucked from our jobs, and like our lives are gonna be ruined if people find out." Right. He should have countered that, but he didn't for some reason. Let me walk away with that. White, if not, why are they not considered white when oftentimes they can pass for white? They even claim white. Uh, what? What? I guess what? What makes them? Uh... Uh, excluded from that category, in your opinion? Well, I would say that they exclude themselves and they exclude other. Like, say, let's say I know it's going to piss a lot of people off, but let's go with the assumption that they're like white, like racially. Okay, I would just say that they have a they are a group that has their own particular interests that is actually not only not aligned but is in direct opposition to the interests, and not just of other whites, but of pretty much every other group. Uh, and in fact, they see themselves that way. And so the, I feel like the burden of uh, uh, sort of the burden on this question isn't on me, but on, on them. Sort of like if you want to be white, yet you. But I mean, they're claiming in, it, right? Though I mean, like, but they also don't. What, claim what, what it, is though. the criteria for claiming it? Though I guess um, I mean, if they can't just say I'm white, and you have to accept it. I mean, what it, you know, other white people just say I'm white, and they look white. It's like okay, they're white, well, right? I like, guess the, the issue, the reason I would say they they are not. I mean, white or not, I would say, the reason I say they're not white. I don't think that I think their interests are directly uh, opposed and, and aligned with each other, and in many ways opposed to mine. So, for example, I can't be a citizen of Israel, right? That fundamentally makes me different than a Jew. Now. You could say, oh, there's some Muslim citizens, but those are all just like grandfathered in from the 1948 war. They have a state that is specifically, you know, ra uh, racially, ethnically exclusive. They have many institutions that are racially, ethnically exclusive, and in fact are racially, ethnically collective for their specific interests. Wait, real quick, uh, you can become a Jewish. Uh, you can become. A I looked this up in the middle of the thing. I don't know if this is actually true or not, but I read that apparently there are ways to become Jewish, like if you serve in the military, some shit. Wow. Some two people have emailed me. No, one person emailed me saying that that isn't exactly how it works, and I think another emailed me with other information about becoming like a member uh, or a citizen of Israel. I don't actually know, but it appears like he didn't know either, so fuck it. An Israeli citizen. I can? Yeah, you can do it through marrying somebody, or you can do it through uh, serving like a military service or whatever. <laughs> all right, sure. I mean, <laughs> I, I got it. Yeah, I, I got it. Just go ahead. We, I, 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 I doubt got it. it. Go ahead. I go seriously ahead.
It's a Jewish state, though. I mean, and they actually, you know, they have a nation. They have something called a nation state law, where it's, it's Israel is to be conceived of as a Jewish state. Okay. I mean, what's your feeling of that? Of that? Do you think I don't give a fuck do what Israel does. I don't even do a lot whoa, of whoa, 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 shit. But, but don't you think they're cutting themselves off from some great opportunities to meet cool people? <gasps> yeah, possible. But, I, but I'm here to talk. Or for sure. I, I don't, I'm not here to talk in, in, in representative of like Israel as a nation. But I'm not asking you that. I'm not asking you to talk in representative. Of them. I'm saying, generally speaking, yeah. you're not here to talk in representative of white people either. I, this is like, I need to, um, I need to be more firm on why I don't like answering these questions. It's not that I'm scared to talk about like what Israel does or whatever. It's just like, I don't, I just don't care. Like I'm an American. We're talking about what I think I should do as an American country. Like if some other country want, um, like, so for instance, like if you would ask me about free speech laws in Scotland, like about like the Count, Count Dankula stuff, I don't like those free speech laws. I think those are scary. Now, if you ask me, well, should they change their laws? I, I don't know. That's, that's for them to decide. That's their country. I don't give a fuck what they do in their country i wouldn't want those laws here uh, because like if we're talking about american freedom of speech i don't want to be thrown in jail for teaching my dog to do like nazi salutes fuck that that's crazy i don't want to be thrown in jail for, or, or fined for that i should be able to do that that's fine um if scotland wants to do though that's their laws that's their shit i don't give a fuck that's a different country i'm not here to like talk about how scotland should change their laws right I have opinions on white organizing. What no, I'm, I've never said that. I'm here to talk as an American about America. Um, I, you know, I don't, I don't agree with a lot of what Israel does. I'm pretty anti-Israel. But you talked a lot about Japan, and you, you, didn't, you don't necessarily agree with their policy. Well, I was pointing to Japan as an example of another homogenous society that still faces well, a lot of the same problems we face in America today that you claim we could get rid of by being more homogenous. So let's what talk about, about Israel. Israel. What, about, what about their policies? Are there any policies they have that you disagree with? Yeah, I think that the quasi-apartheid shit that they do on the West Bank to some of the Palestinians are crazy. I think the disproportionate amount of force that they use, I think kind of baiting people into attacking them, I think pretending that they're constantly under attack by organizations that obviously don't have the same funding or military support of them is fucked up as well. But obviously, yeah, yeah I, I, I agree a lot. I think that when um, Netanyahu or whoever well. I don't have to be pro-Israel to not believe in a Jewish conspiracy theory in the United States, though. Okay, I'm just, I was just curious how far your, your, your criticism of them would be. I agree with highly critical of it. Israel. They make up shit all the time to fucking murder Palestinians and shit. I've got some Palestinian friends. I've got Jewish friends as well, though. But I don't consider the Jews in the United States to be part of Israel. I think that requires like a grander conspiracy. Where the, the fuck is all this carbon dioxide coming from? What um, do, they do, they do, they, do they lobby for it? Um, you know, not, you know, <laughs> Most of the Jews that I know are non practicing. They don't give a okay, fuck about Jews that you know, I mean, are those are representative. But non practicing, that, that's irrelevant, actually. Practicing Judaism is not actually really a big a big deal. Like a lot of non practicing Jews still on a nationalistic and racial level identify with Israel. Majority. Baiting and attacking them. I read something a while ago. What what did this have to do where. There was some, I think it was two Israeli children were lost, and apparently apparently the Israeli police, the IDF or whatever, knew where they were, or they knew that they hadn't been killed by Palestinians, but they blamed Palestinians on anyway, and they used that as an excuse to go in and, like, bomb a bunch of shit or, or something. Um, I wish I could remember the exact story, but, like, basically they misrepresented, like, the kidnapping of these students in order to go in and, like, do some bullshit. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, depending on what what data you get, data we're sure. but most it's released Jews, uh, when you dig Reddit. Me a is that true? Yeah, I'm sure, they feel some connection. I mean, as a Jewish person, depending on how many places. you So, get. do you think they get something out of that? Out of the idea of having the, here, we have a state mm -hmm. and a place for us. Yeah, even though you, we're here. Yeah, for sure. Country. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm sure okay. they do get something out of it. Yeah. So why can't other people also have that? We do. It's called America, but it's not based on but your it, race. But, it never but has it's been. not though. But it is. Course. I'm an American. You're an American. Yeah, we enjoy American privileges. This is our homeland. We don't have like if you were to follow your roots back. Now I'm just guessing by looking at it. You're probably not an American Indian. I could be wrong on that, but I'm guessing that your roots probably go back. No, to but I'm the kind of person that pretends he is. Okay, sure. But I mean, like at the end of the day, like in America, <laughs> no, we don't feel a strong allegiance to like our people in Germany or or France or maybe on St. Patty's Day, some people come out. Wait, this has to be a bug. Where the fuck did all this carbon dioxide come from? This must be a glitch. I don't understand it all right now. Sorry. As being more Irish, I don't know why people do that shit sometimes. But no, like in general, like the country that we kind of like come around. I have more America. affinity for those countries than I do for Israel. Or, you know, any, yeah, I'm, certainly I have a greater connection to, to Europe than I would to other parts of the world. Sure, I'm sure, sure people with European ancestry probably would, for sure. Right. But there at the end go. of the day, our allegiance is to the United States. Or it should be, it ought to be. I guess if you live here, it seems kind I of mean, important to be. If it, I don't think the United States has really earned my... I mean, I, I'm not talking about being a traitor, but mm -hmm. in terms of like... The idea that I have to like blindly agree, like I completely disagree with this this bullshit that we've been doing foreign policy wise. Sure, really, amen. And that's why we have a first amendment right. You can burn the fuck out of the flag in the streets. So fuck burning the flag doesn't stop it though. I don't. Well, no, of course not. If you want to stop it, it comes what down I to. Do votes. I want to point out the people that are doing it, and I want to get them out of power so they stop. And that's when you start getting in trouble. Well, the, I don't care about burning a flag. I'll, I'll fly a flag. So like, I want to burn a different flag. The, the, the sad opinion. The I, like, Jewish flag. I used to be so much more conspiracy driven, but like, as you spend more time looking at things, like the sad opinion is just like, a lot of people are just pretty fucking dumb. Like when it comes to our meanderings in the Middle East, like a lot of it isn't this like big, like conspiracy Wait, theory that's got how is this emitting like, carbon dioxide? Here's the thing. A lot of people don't even give a fuck about foreign policy. They really don't. It ranks really far down on those lists compared to like yes. healthcare, the economy. I mean, generally speaking, it feels like it doesn't actually affect you. Yeah, for the most part, a lot of people feel that way. Yeah. Right. So like, I don't think you need a grain. I mean, it's not, it doesn't mean it's true. It also doesn't mean that like it, it affects you if, uh, you know, Americans get this bad name internationally because of how we act and, and like, sure. you know. And I don't disagree with that, which is why in the same vein that you just said, just because foreign policy doesn't affect you, okay, doesn't mean that it doesn't, right? Just because you or think it doesn't. It doesn't. Like it yeah, you. sure, of course, 100%. Even though if we were to look at polls of what people's like most important opinions well, are, foreign policy is like, I think it's like seven or eight. It's really low depending on like the questions you ask. But much the same way that I would say, listen, now you might say that in a poll, but that's real dumb. I would say the same thing earlier about
Very good. All right, I have, a, I have a question for you, Mike. Another question for you, even though you had the last one, but I'll let Destiny weigh in on it as well. Uh, mainstream Republicans have very publicly supported the lessening of restrictions on immigration. Other dissident right-wingers have publicly advocated for the election of Democrats in the short term in order to ensure that those Republicans are no longer in office. Would you agree with such a plan, and would you extend this plan to voting for the Democratic candidate against Donald Trump? Uh, I would, I mean, again, the, the interesting thing is, like, I, I am very much um, against the Republican Party. Uh, I'm very much opposed to it. In fact, I'd actually ask Destiny why he's not a Republican, given his positions. It seems like he's right in line. I mean, he's pro homosexual, pro immigration. Um, I don't see. It's probably going to be for, this, for the same reason that um, for the same reason that you are. Like, and I think a lot of people. This started with the Tea Party. Um, I don't know if you yeah. feel. Oh, actually, I was a kind of a joke. But oh, should sure. I finish answering the question, Rob? Yeah. The Republican Party is a party of large corporations. I don't think either yes. of us are going to disagree. That, that, no, nobody disagrees. Yeah, of course. And it's been that way for a long time, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'd say, um, you know, I, I would say that uh, my my views and the issues that I I I take don't like really fit in neatly to any particular party platform. And in fact, this is my beef with the American system generally: is the two parties are representative of a dialectic that I think is not the conversation we should be having. I think that the, that the conversation that inevitably ha we have around the two-party system pigeonholes people in positions, and then people start rooting for a party, and they, they get attached to it in a way that's very dumb, and you get, like, Republic, you know, Republic, demon craps and Republic cards, and, like, just people rah, rah, rah for their team. They're not really even thinking about it. But also then the positions that these parties take. So, um, you know, the Republicans seem to win, generally speaking, on economic-type policies, and Democrats win on cultural policies, and I would actually like to invert that exactly. Um, you know, like, and, and there's no real represent, representation of what we would call like a third position, like kind of a socially conservative and economically uh, progressive party, which is, you know, some people have another word for that. That's, you know, we don't need to say what it is, but I, I would say, you know, I don't know would I advocate voting for a Democrat in an election or not. I mean, my favorite candidate for president is Tulsi Gabbard. Um, but that is primarily because of her foreign policy views. But I also think that her views on culture and social issues and even potentially immigration are less toxic than anybody else's. Um, How does so, this go on for an hour longer? Oh, it's like the question and answer. So Donald Trump, I just don't trust him. I was very much in favor of him in 2016. Uh, I think that you know him losing and him him losing could have benefits, and winning could have certain benefits. I will just have to play it as we go. But I, I wouldn't say one. I, it just I can't say one way or the other. But I certainly don't think there's a reason to for people that agree with my politics to knee jerk support Republicans in every case. And in fact, I would argue Republicans are our worst enemies because when we look at the cultural transformation and the demographic transformation of America over the last 50 years, you know Republicans have been in power 30 out of those 20 years, and look at where we are. And in fact, Republicans are always the one that pass amnesty, always. Now, let me ask you a question, Destiny. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the bread tube types or, I guess, harder left uh, types have criticized you uh, during this uh, primary campaign uh, for the Democratic nomination. Uh, I guess kind of portrayed you as a corporatist almost. They're uh, not sufficiently well, well, I don't know if you're corporatist. I don't oh, know if you corporatist. Okay, sure. Yeah, corporatist or kind of uh, you know, business class Democrat or something like that. Sure. And not sufficiently woke or not sufficiently left wing enough. Uh, I guess uh, just what, what do you think about those critiques and do they hold any water with you? Um, I don't get accused of being not woke enough. Generally, the attacks on me come from an economic point of view because I don't buy into social. Yeah. So that typically is like, in terms of like wokeness, I would consider myself to be more woke than a lot of the bread tube types. Um, a lot of the bread tube types, for instance, like will like, say fuck intersectionality. Um, it's all about class, uh, which is a huge disagreement that I've had with a lot of people on the left, you know, as of recently, where they'll say things like racism doesn't exist, that's just capitalism in disguise or shit like that. Um, so yeah, that's been my big, like, kind of, like, divergence from where the extreme left types recently. All right, uh, now there's another question for you. A common line of thought on the left is that America has no cultural identity of its own. Do you agree with this sentiment? And then, uh, well, I guess I'll ask you that first. Do you agree with this? I guess, like, so I'm trying to do something different this year, which is build positive arguments, which usually I'm very critical of people's positions, but I'm trying to build more positive arguments. So usually when I say there is no American culture, I'm usually doing that as an attack on somebody that feels like some group of people doesn't represent, you know, like what it is to be an American. And I feel like this is a question that I should ask people more, especially when I talk to people that are more in favor of like certain demographic compositions of the country. Because like I see among different immigrant groups, like, a lot of characteristics that I would assume to be like American. So like for instance, we think of, like an American father, a man working really hard to care for his family no matter what. Like that's a Hispanic dude roofing, you know, 120 degrees summers in the West for me. Like I see that embodied in like. He's up on a roof with hot shit. Yeah, that's that to me is like that's an, hot that's an American fucking value, right? Like, Hispanic dude, like, fucking group, like, working hard. And that dude is like, a, hot this is some dog whistle. I just don't know what the fuck it is. What hot mops are, whatever. Sure, I don't know if it's a dog whistle something, but like that's like an American value, right? When I think of like some of my, um, if I think of like some of my uh, like black friends, like that I knew growing up, like these guys usually had like the strictest parents. When I think of like parents of older children, how things to do their job, like you know, Wait. whatever. Um, like I think of like some of those parents. Yeah, Sorry, parents. yeah. <clears throat> Um, that's very strange given your background with your parents, but we won't go into that. Um, so, like, when I think of like some of the strictest families that I can think of, they're usually I don't know if I use the word ethnic families, but like brown Hispanic families, like my Cuban half, or like some of the black families I knew growing up. Um, and like these seem to be American values. You no, know, when it comes to like celebrating holidays and traditions and shit, Asian people do this a ton. This seems to be like an American value to me. Um, so yeah, I don't know. When you say like what are American values, like I have a collection of things that I would think like these are things that I would hope are like um, emblematic of Americans. So like working hard, you know, being an individual but still community driven. Um, you know, like taking care of your family or your like fellow citizen. You know, um, being accepting like other types of people. And I think that different types of people all across America embody these beliefs, and I don't think it's restricted to like a particular skin color or the way a person looks. Now, Mike, if you wanted to uh, follow up on that, the question. Can you just reiterate the question? Like, yeah. Uh, yes, I can, I can. Let me switch back. Uh, common line of thought on the left is that America has no cultural identity. Identity, easy for me to say, of its own. Do you agree with this sentiment? No, I, I wouldn't say so. I just would say that uh, the American culture that we have today is is uh, something I find despicable, generally speaking. But uh, it's okay. there. I mean, I don't think that. I think that. Uh, I mean, again, going back through history, sure, obviously at different times, I think I would think it would be better than others. I think today, American culture is particularly mainstream culture is, is alienating. It's stupid. It's like. It, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't appeal to anyone. It's very degenerate, and it's not something that anybody should want to be part of. On top of that, the way a lot of ways that people escape this is also alienating and keeping them, you know, away from communities and things. And I, I would love to get back to a country where people can exist in
this. And um, that is ultimately going to, it, it already has, and it will lead to a further fracturing of any kind of American identity. So I think America today is more than anything, a uh, sort of like an administrative economic unit. It's not really like a country or a culture or something that uh, people feel like they belong to. It's, it's like just, I'm here to participate in this, uh, you, know, you know, this economy. And it's, it's really, it's really incredible. I think um, for, on that, like, I think we're probably gonna disagree on all of the social stuff, but in terms of like the broader, like um, perspective there, I 100% agree. And I think this is one of the frustrating things that um, people like me or even people like Mike have is that like the left seems to ignore like a lot of the very obvious cultural problems that exist right now, not necessarily with diversity. Um, and then the right seems to not want to talk about anything that is in some form of like hyper capitalism or hyper consumerism. Um, and it feels like sometimes, depending on who you're talking to, that like we're maximizing for economic outcomes while ignoring the fact that the main drivers behind all of this are just people that are being like increasingly fragmented like over and over and over again, and that we don't really have much a sense of community anymore. Um, I think it would be really good to figure out ways to address that by like going back to building communities and whatnot. And that, um, yeah, and then like Mike said, um, ironically, one of the ways that people escape, one of the ways that white people escape, has been through online gaming. Um, and you see a lot of these people that exist in these Discord groups and these online communities anymore. Um, these Reddit communities and 4chan, where all these people, uh, you know, a lot of these guys are white guys that are like disenfranchised, not economically, but just like in a, in a sense of community that want to create their own culture. These people aren't happy either. A lot of these guys are super fucking miserable. They can't talk to girls. They don't go out and talk to anybody. They feel super fucking lost in life. Um, I, I think addressing these problems is like very, very important to everybody in America, but it seems like none of the major political groups are talking about it a lot of times. All right, let's throw it around to the panel. Flamingo, are you there? I am indeed. Wow, you were on it. I gotta give you credit. Uh, you haven't spoken a word the whole entire stream, but you were ready. Well, uh, you, you were in that call, and then we uh, went into this, so. Well, yeah, there wasn't really a chance. And, you know, our policy here, once, you know, when people are going at it, we just let them go at it, usually. Uh, but do you have a question for one or both of the uh, guests here? Uh, I've got one question for Destiny. It might be a question he doesn't want to answer because it's somewhat more of a personal one, uh, specifically towards the drama that you were going through about three months ago. I don't know if you want to answer something like that or not, so just feel free to answer, okay, but I just want to talk about it. Yeah, one of, the, uh, one of the individuals that was uh, having a bit of drama with you was uh, Hassan specifically, and I'd watched uh, one of his streams where he was uh, getting relatively angry about you specifically, saying that you're uh, you're moving to, I guess, defending, you know, just, you know, personal, and people in their personal lives, just kind of doing whatever as long as it's not online, not encouraging things, was going to encourage people that you, uh, quote unquote, de-radicalize uh, back to the right. Uh, does Hassan talk like this in, like, personal, like, off-camera sort of ways? Is he talking sort of vapid kind of? You know, superficial way like that. Um, I don't. Um, are you like are you asking? And feel free. Ladies? And feel free. And feel free if you think that this is going to cause like more drama than it's I, worth. I don't care about anybody ever. Every fucking bridge I had on Harvey, I've already done it over the past year. Um, I, I, in terms of like, are you asking me like if I go to like Hassan's house, is he like living like a frat boy lifestyle where he's like banging chicks and he's like fuck the socialism shit, bro? No, um, I mean if he's like talking, well, does he like does he talk in this sort of larpy way IRL? I wouldn't say I wouldn't call it larpy. That's pretty loaded. I would say that Hassan pretty consistently says like the same things no matter what environment he's in. I, like I feel like he believes. I mean like I'm not like his mom or dad. I don't exist in his head. Like I'm pretty sure he believes the things that he says as much as anybody can. I can't say the same thing consistently in person or like online or whatever. It's not like he changes dramatically when we go out to dinner or if we're you know like in person or whatever. And then the other question that I had specifically was, um, and this is kind of directed towards both of you, what do you guys think about the uh, possibility, because I know that uh, about a year and a half ago there was a slew of online articles after an individual named uh, Faraday Speaks created a video about how specifically watching your videos he kind of moved away from, he says the alt-right, but it kind of, you know, was maybe in the pseudo anti-SJW centrist sort of thing, it, 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 he's very inconsistent with it. Uh, what do you guys think is, uh, do you think that people, once they have a political ideology, can really change it in any sort of broad ways, or do you think that once people have their political ideology, they're, they're largely set in their ways on that? I mean, I, the way that I view this is like, from my old edgy atheist debating days. Um, there's a, there's a, there's a, um, a quote that we all use when we debated like theologists. And it was, you can't reason somebody into out of a position that they didn't reason themselves into. Um, I, I think that works the same for like political ideologies. Like how easy it is to move somebody from one political ideology to another really depends on how they got there. You know, if somebody spent a lot of like careful thinking and you know arrived at some political position, it's gonna be pretty hard to move them out. You know, if somebody was in a group of people that all had a particular position, then they get a new group of friends. They're probably more likely to adopt that position, which is probably how most people come to their positions. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Like we tend to inherit a lot of unquestioned morals and style preferences from the people around us. But yeah, I think that you can change your big political position. It just depends on like the group that you're around at any particular point in time and how you form those opinions. And I think that's um, my, my theory, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, would, I think people can, but generally they don't. Um, and I think it depends on how emotionally connected or in some cases economically connected they are to <clears throat> the kinds of positions they promote. And I think the kind of people that are willing to, I think, I think a lot of people like to flatter themselves that, uh, that my positions are pure reason. I detach myself completely from interests or, or emotion. And I, you know, but that's bullshit. Like, that's rare. And I would also just say, some of there's nothing wrong with being emotionally committed to something, um, depending on, you know, obviously depending on if certain emotions are blocking you from critical thought on things that are really dumb, that, that's stupid. But I would say, for the most part, people don't. And it takes a little bit more brain power than average to, to do it, but people have. Now, let me ask you this. Des oh. Yeah, let me, I'll get you back in. Yeah, 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 no problem. Yeah, I'll, I'll I think more. I don't think uh, there's much left to go over here, Phanos. Okay, all right. <clears throat> okay, nailing people down on pivoting is still something we need to work on. JQ shit, we just have to stay the fuck away from. And find ways to get off of it by pointing out that they're pivoting so that we don't look weak, like we don't want to address it. Unless I actually do JQ shit in the future, which we might. Um, but otherwise, okay. Hit the rhetorical points. All right, we got 42 minutes. Really? Yeah, yeah, I got so, so hot. It was the highest I've ever been in my entire life. Oh, really? Two babies. Yeah, it was pretty. It, it was, was unbelievable.